with the peel. Hit him. God, no wonder he slipped to the second round. <laughs> Creep. Wow, he just straight lost it overnight. Uh, all right. So are you I, watching this on uh, ABC again? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I I did see that uh, Steelers first pick of the second round took Joey Porter Jr. Uh, mm -hmm. Love love that for them. Yep. And just like that, the top two guys on the board just went off. Uh, anyone in particular you're open falls to us at 42 here? But actually, before you even answer that, did you see the compensation that was traded for that to move up to 33? Uh, I did not. It's They moved up. It, it was the Cardinals had that pick, right? Yeah. It's really not that good of a deal for the for the Cardinals. So the Cardinals traded pick 33, and they also traded pick 81. And the Titans traded pick 41 and pick 42. So the Titans traded up eight spots, and they also... The Cardinals are only moving up eight eight spots in like the third round. It's. I, I it, thought you just said it was forty one and. Here, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm gonna show so you the way you said it, it sounded like they're getting yeah. two second round picks, and they they just dropped back eight spots and gave up a third. Can you see that? Uh, it's loading. Oh, all right, huh? Like maybe, yeah. maybe that's like a third round, the second round. But like, I don't think teams. No, really like I mean that's that's like just that. it's moving up nine picks in the third and dropping eight picks in the second. Yeah, that Did, seems like a bad deal to be honest. For for real, like wow. Okay. Oh, these Whatever. picks are flying tonight. Lions yeah, I think, already... I think they only have seven or eight minutes too to get these in. God, I can't wait for the Lions. Ah, just... uh, you motherfuckers! They take Michael Mayer. No, uh, Sam Laporta, who I kind of viewed as a dark horse, like type of guy who could emerge as actually being the best tight end in this class. More than that, I'm kind of like. I would love Mayer. I don't think that he's going to fall to us, but the guy I want I want Darnell Washington over Mayer. Yeah, you, you don't like Musgrave? No, man, Musgrave's an athlete. Like his RAS scores. Yeah, are, man, he's like, an athlete. He's not a blocker. Well, you take you take game changers there in the second round, like high up in the draft. We can get we'll just convert. We'll just convert some offensive linemen to. Tight end block for us. Just, just send out an extra the U formation next year. Yeah, I just, I just like that Darnell Washington is essentially a younger, more athletic Mercedes Lewis, who like he would give us what Big Dog gives us in the blocking department, but he would give more as a receiver. And like when you look at his athletic testing numbers, it's insane how much of a unicorn he is. Like. His, like I so. his uh I think like his ten and twenty yard splits were like up there with the top two wide receivers in this class. Mm -hmm. Um Sorry. and dude's like six seven, you know, and be a major red zone threat. I I would be very happy with Darnell Washington if he falls to us. Colts already got their pick in. Jesus, man, they, no one is oh they're, they're trading it actually. Uh, trade it to the Raiders. I bet you Hendon Hooker. Well, all right. So, looking at this board over here, I have my Mayor up. He's still on the board. Miles Murphy got drafted, right? I just yes. crossed his name off. All right. And then after that, it comes down to like Brian Branch. I, I, would, I don't really is, is like Branch. Is is he just like off your draft board completely? Not no. It, if we could get him in the third, I'd be happy about it. I don't, I don't think he's he gonna make it. Third. Yeah. After that, I got Luke Luke Musgrave, Felix, 
Uh, maybe he went too, though. Felix yeah, he, and, and Felix he went to the Chiefs last pick yeah. last yeah. night. I did. I started to do a terrible job of crossing names off at the end. <laughs> uh, what about for like tackles? We got anyone? well, we got Matt Bergeron and Cody Mock still on the board. Yeah, I which think, did Anton what, Harrison go to? Yeah, yeah, or He's Anton. Off. Yeah, he he went to the Jaguars. Um, yeah, I mean, I I was completely on board, you know, pounding the table for offensive tackle in round one. Uh, now that we didn't get one of those top tier guys, like, honestly, I, I kind of think that Goot will just roll with the offensive linemen that we've drafted over the last several years and see how they develop. Um, you know, maybe we take a round four or five guy but I, I don't think he's going to prioritize it uh, now that he can't get an elite talent. Yeah. Um, like when I was looking at who is left on the board and, and like kind of who, who stands out and, and who mm, like kind of matches Packers, measurables and all that. Um, I think a sleeper pick in the second, second round could be a cornerback. Anyone in particular? Like, uh, um, Ringo, Brent, Julius, Ring, Ringo could be a possibility. Um, I was looking at uh, Cam Smith, uh, Tyreek Stevenson. Um, okay, yeah, it there's like there's there's quite a bit of depth in this second tier of corners. Uh, you got Julius Brent, Garrett Williams, DJ Turner. Um, so like I, don't know, I I could see that uh, I I really think we're gonna target tight end in the second round though if if we don't do it now we're gonna miss out on a difference maker. The Raiders just traded up with the Colts. It looked like. Yeah, I bet you it's Hedden Hooker. Okay. Oh yeah, they did. Not say. <sighs> would you? So you would take a corner over like a safety? Really? I mean, to be honest, our starting safeties going into the season right now is. Uh, Darnell Savage. Oh, uh, fuck. Not Raiders Hooker. take Michael Mayer. Oh. Bastards. Well, they did, they did just trade away. Uh, Darren Waller. His, yeah. Uh, Damn. Dude, we're hey, getting... <laughs> At this point, if, if, if Green Bay really, really wanted him, they should have been aggressive and moved up and got him. And, like, we have the ammo to move up at this point to get it. They... They're probably just cool with the board falling to them. Or maybe you see them move up for – there's not much for – we got Washington and Musgrave. Now, I, I knew there was going to be a run on tight ends in the first 10 yeah. picks, though. I no, knew it's it. It's definitely – it's a yeah, run is happening. Um, you know, I, I still – I would be happy with Washington. You like Musgrave. I don't. Uh, Tucker Craft is a guy I've heard a lot of good things about, but – um as more of a like late round two early round three mm -hmm. but with a run happening you probably if you want them you got to take them do you think green bay is like kind of bullish on tyler davis and they don't feel like they need a freaking tight end oh, this early fuck tyler davis are you <laughs> kidding me dude they have protected this guy for like two years on our team though Dude, I mean, there is something to be said for, like, Robert Tunyon was an undrafted free agent who was practically invisible until, like, his fourth year in the league or something. Um, like, tight ends do take longer to develop. Uh, Tyler Davis, you know, he could still end up being a contributor, but I'm not counting on him as tight end one man especially in a class with this much talent take one of these young bucks and let them grow with jordan love did you just mute yourself oh it just got real freaking quiet just now i don't know who i want to fall or for us to take this point what about keon white would you just double up on the d line yeah i can't hear you right now I'm not talking right now. Oh, okay. It was like, like, like. Usually, I can hear the background noise a little bit, but I can't hear. It. What about, what about Keon White? 
Um, that's interesting. Um, because I mean, I definitely think in this draft that we need both an edge and a defensive line player. Van Ness kind of fills both of that, but if you want to give him just like one role as a rookie to focus on, you know, maybe you play him at edge and and we try to get a, a D lineman, a, you know, a more traditional D lineman like Keon White. I could see that. We kind of mentioned we, me and you personally talked before the draft today. Uh, I think we're both on the same boat where after sleeping on the Van Ness pick, kind of warmed up to it a little bit. Like, I didn't hate, hate it, I guess. Like, I didn't love it, but I think it's a smart decision. Like, it's never bad of you to invest those high picks in, in a premium position. And he's going to, I mean, he's going to need to play a big role for us here sooner rather than what. Like, Gary's going to start the year on with his torn ACL. Could be Preston's last year. You know, yeah, no, I mean, he's premium pick. Uh, you know, he has elite athleticism. Um, he's you know, he fits our size profile to a T. Uh, and he's he's just gonna keep getting bigger. I mean, that dude put 60 pounds on in his freshman year. Um, so like, we and and he's only 21, mm -hmm. so like, he's still he can put weight on uh you know he he could get up to like a jj watt type of frame i think um if we wanted to play him on the d line uh mm -hmm. or if we want to play him at edge you know we could we could go more toward the tj watt frame um and and i think that is like that's the hope with van ness mm -hmm. you you swing in for the fences that he's going to be one of the watt brothers um, he has really, you know, similar measurables. So, hopefully, you know, that'd be that'd be awesome. That would be great. Uh, the Rams did they announce on your end? They're taking uh, they're, they're taking Steve Avila, the top ranked interior offensive lineman in this draft. They need they needed linemen. Help. That is interesting, though. I'm surprised Avila went before um, Osiris Torrance. Yeah. You know, that's actually that could be a sleeper for the Packers that um if if we're looking it, if we get to our pick and like best player available is an elite interior offensive lineman, mm -hmm. like you can never it's never a bad idea to strengthen your offensive line. And um Josh Myers is still, I wouldn't necessarily say he's proven. You know, he he's been up and down. John Runyon is serviceable, but not a difference maker. Um, I I could see us going interior offensive line if yeah. that's the best value on the board. I don't like. We need to keep adding to our O line. I don't think we're in as bad of a spot at tackle as or like our line as others m might think like tackle yeah. wise, we still got Bakhtiari for another year. Uh, we, J Yosh Nijman, you know, was, you know, coming back and he was, he played great. Um, he could be our right tackle. Perhaps I think Zach Tom is going to probably push to play a tackle spot and he played pretty well for us in spot coverage last year. Uh, like I definitely want to, you know, keep adding to it, but yeah. I'm not well, like... so the way I the way I look at it is uh, Bakhtiari, he's gone after this year, if yeah. not traded mid season. Um, mm -hmm. there's no way we're we're paying a forty million dollar cap hit for him next year. Uh, Yosh, um, a lot of people are down on him because they only remember the last couple games of the season when he got his ass beat. Uh, but they forget that his shoulder was fucked up in those games. He actually played very well for the majority of the season. Yeah. Uh, the only reason that I have reservations about him is because he'll be a free agent next year. And, uh, you know, will will we pay to keep him? Or you know, it, it's a question of do we think he is going to be worth the money? Um, is he that much of a difference maker? And Zach Tom, yeah, he showed promise, but he's also 
really unknown right now. I wouldn't say he's proven by any stretch. Uh, so that that's why I was really on board for the idea of getting an elite tackle. But now that the elite ones are gone, I wouldn't. I would feel more comfortable just giving our guys a chance um, to grow rather than forcing a new guy in the room. Okay, the Seahawks are taking Edge Derek Hall. Man, I saw Hall mocks for like yeah, I only fourth see, rounds. Where is Hall on this list? Dude, Seahawks me? always reach for players, like uh, every he's, draft. He's ranked sixty six on the on the big board I'm looking at right here. Okay, you know one, right. one of the things that that uh, you know when I was thinking about Van Ness, um, that started warming me up on the pick more and i want to be clear like i i didn't dislike the pick last night i just didn't like love it um but you know after you know looking at his measurables and and you showed me some some pretty sick highlights oh yeah uh but also the fact that like we got the third edge player taken in an incredibly deep edge class um you know that and there's an argument to be made that the top edge player taken, Will Anderson, he might be topped out. He might not have room for growth. Van Ness definitely has room for growth. Van Ness is only 21 years old, and he's far from a finished product. He can keep adding, adding to his physique, adding to his repertoire move. He's already got pretty good skill set. Like, sky's the limit for, for, for the kid. I'm... I'm Oh, it looks oh, there's a trade. Uh, the Falcons are moving up, and the Colts are trading back. Who could the Falcons be targeting? I would love to. Here, I gotta bring up uh, like a live big board so I can see who's available because this fucking ABC broadcast sucks <laughs> ass. The ones I'm seeing on mine at the moment, Brian Branch, Luke Musgrave, Hendon Hooker. Did Keanu Benton get taken last night? No. Keanu Benton, Jonathan Mingo, wide receiver. Mingo really intrigues me as yeah. like DK Metcalf type. Um, look at that. Look at that. I don't know if you see it. A little star right next to him. A little star. I liked him. Yep. Yeah. He's, he yes. would be one I would not be. <laughs> Is that a laminated about. sheet you have there, man? No. No, it's a normal sheet. It's oh, just okay. on a. It's just I, on a I thought you had that shit laminated like a true professional. <laughs> <laughs> next year I will now. Yeah. All right. Falcons pick is in. Who is Atlanta taking? Uh, Matthew Bergeron. Whew. Okay. And that's actually funny. Um, you know, he, he's an offensive tackle, uh, but the guy announcing the pick is uh, John Abraham, former Falcon safety. He announced him as a guard. So <laughs> I don't know Here's... if that's a personal judgment on his part or if he knows the Falcons are moving him to guard. Here's a little side, side story I can use to fill some time. So I uh... – work out at a gym in uh, Baldwinsville, which is just outside of Syracuse a little bit. And uh, I usually go pretty early in the morning. And there's this guy that comes in a lot, and he has his backpack on, and it's an official Syracuse football licensed bag, book bag. So he plays for, for Syracuse football. And uh, big guy, like, he looks like he's probably a defensive end or a lineman or something like that. He's, like, he's not, like, he's not, like, Matthew Bergeron big, but, you know, he's heavy up top smallish frame on the bottom i was just i haven't talked to him but i was like man i wonder like I wonder what position he plays for syracuse and whether he's a starter or whatnot but yeah, just <laughs> kind of cool oh dude don't don't be a shy guy go up and ask me to tickle that man's butthole um no fucking cream puff man oh man that cream puff was disappointing but I'm glad I brought you joy. <laughs> what about um, 
the more I see this board falling, the more I just don't think I want him in the third round, but he ain't falling to the third round. Uh, added, added to Tomiwa, added Baware. He's defensive end. Like, I really, really liked his tape. And yeah, I, I mean, I've seen him it. really rising up the boards lately. I even yeah. saw some mocks with him going in the first. Yeah, he's yeah he's shooting up, but like he's not falling prior to the third. He's getting taken in this round. I don't, I don't know, dude. I just I think you gotta go offense at this point to surround love with some talent and give him a chance well we, got, well we basically got back-to-back picks like we can go we can split one offense one defense do you know do you know that over the last 19 drafts green bay has gone to f- defense in 16 of those drafts defense wins championships not for us because we keep messing it up <laughs> yeah um ah, crap there he goes uh what? The Panthers, uh, I don't think that you've seen it on your end yet. Panthers are taking Jonathan Mingo. Damn. Mingo. Trying, off trying to get board. that DJ Moore replacement. Yeah. Man, I wish we could have got DJ Moore. I, we tried to trade for him, but at the trade deadline, it just didn't, didn't work out. And then the Bears go, go and get him. Yeah, I mean, I, I am curious what it would have cost to get more just straight up. You know, rather than the whole package deal that they did with the Bears. Like, honestly, I thought the Bears fleeced them in that trade, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to jump back to offensive line real quick because uh, we, we kind of got distracted there. Um, but, like, going back to our tackle situation, you know, we, we were talking about uh, Bakhtiari and Yosh being the starters, mm-hmm. and, and Zach Tom is, is a good swing guy. Um, but we also got to keep in mind, we took Rashid Walker in the seventh, and, mm-hmm. and he was a guy with a lot of promise where it's like, if he came out the year before, people were talking about him as like a second round pick, and then he yeah. just had like a really bad year. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has potential. Uh, also, like the the preseason darling of, of the Packers was... Um, uh, Caleb Jones, that fucking mountain of a man who <laughs> he ended up getting mono for half the season that, that really threw off his development. Yeah. Um, but both of those guys showed promise as well as we picked up. Um, I think his name is like Luke Tan- Tanaka or something. Um, he was a six round pick uh, last year uh, of the Broncos and they cut him. And, and we picked him up. So we have some like late round developmental guys mm-hmm. to to go along with that trio of Bakhtiari, Nijman, and Zach Tom. Um, so we we could feel like we want to give them a year to grow. Um, who knows what we have in Sean Ryan. Uh, you know, I think he's probably a guard for us. But Yeah, yeah, he's a guard. He's, well, if, if he... I mean, I know depth charts aren't concrete, especially this time of the year. Sean Ryan's listed on the fourth team right now, so he's buried on this on our on the depth chart. It's got they have him listed at right guard, but first team is you know Runyon, second team Royce Newman, third team Jake Hansen, and then Sean Ryan's listed as the fourth. Jake so. Hansen's a fucking bum. Uh, I, <laughs> Royce Newman, he he took a lot of shit last year. Um, and and he did play very poorly, mm-hmm. but I think you got to look back to his rookie year. Um, you know, he didn't play great, but he was mm-hmm. a 16 game starter for us uh, as a rookie. I, I think we messed up its development trying to get him to play right tackle and guard. Um, I would rather just let him focus on guard, and I think he could be a really serviceable backup player for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but once again, you know, like, like I said, I I'm not sold on Myers or Runyon as elite players. If we saw like an elite interior offensive lineman, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, as far as wide receivers go, I don't think we take one until the third, but you never know. Jalen Hyatt's still on the board, but 
There were rumors that we really liked Hyatt, but I, his body yeah. type does not match a traditional Packers receiver. He's very small. Yeah, yeah. I like I keep thinking about that threshold that you know we go to, but Goot did did break it for Amari Rogers, but he also fucked up when he did it for Amari Rogers too. Well, but also yeah, Amari Rogers was short, but he was. He was built like a running back, man. He was very thick. He was like 212 pounds or something. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, height is less of a threshold factor than weight. Like, you're looking at these 175-pound receivers. I just I get real worried that they're not going to hold up in the NFL. I, I, don't know, I'm, I, I do like the height. Like, I like the really tall receivers where they can, where they can hype. Because the corners these days are, like, real short, too. If if you can get a receiver who's tall, like those little goal line fades, you just bully ball it, just throw it up high, and no corner's gonna be able to catch that. You just yeah. high point the ball and bring it well, down, dude. I mean, that's one thing. Aaron Rodgers never threw up jump balls. He he didn't want to risk the interception, and he just never gave his guys a chance on jump balls. Maybe with Jordan Love, uh, the philosophy changes a little, and and we're willing to do a little jump ball kind of red zone stuff. Give me a second while I bite Ian here. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah I should I mean, have... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm going through the list of receivers. Do you know a little bit about the receivers that I'm seeing here? Like, like height-wise, build-wise? Like, Jane Reed's Pretty high up on my board. I know um, I mean, most like, of the receivers in this year's draft are small guys. It, they it's are a very real easy. small. Yeah, it's a select uh, number that match uh, Green Bay's th thresholds. Um, like I, my lists were around like two and three guys. Um, I got Michael Wilson, Rashi Rice, At Perry, Cedric Tillman. Um, you know, Mingo's gone now. Do you know, uh, so, um, a taller receiver that I would love late would be Bryce Ford Wheaton. Did you, I don't know if you looked him up at all. He's from West Virginia. He's, yeah, he's a, I heard about him, but I don't, I don't know how much a late round receiver is going to do for us really. Well, I mean, Dobbs is a fourth round receiver. Oh yeah. I, I don't consider fourth round late. Um, Bryce Ford Wheaton, Wheaton scored a um, scored another perfect ten on his, on his our, our RAS. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, one one hit him at nine point nine seven, but then there's a few other ones. That the official one has him listed at a at a, at a ten point oh. Welcome back, Mister Ian. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. In, in fact, if you're if you're drafting based on pure RAS, he is the top wide receiver in the draft, followed by by Mingo, who is number two. I think Cedric Tillman's the best one. I'm actually surprised Mingo went before him. Yeah, I I like Tillman. Uh, I think Mingo Diego is good. Foskey here, defensive end. They took Foskey. Yep. Wow, he was uh he's ranked seventy seventh on this board. That's a good one. Well and they took their their first round pick last night was uh Brian Brice. Yeah, Brice, Brice, whatever. Um so they're they're trying to keep up that uh you know, they've relied on a dominant defensive line for years and um still going with that approach. I mean their offense is Pretty stacked, um, if, if you believe in Derek Carr. And, and frankly, I believe in Derek Carr more than most people these days. Um, I think they need a receiver, so you can't rely on Mike Williams to stay healthy. Michael Thomas, yeah. Mike yeah. Williams, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, they've got Olave and Jarvis Landry, and then obviously they still have Kamara. Um, but Landry was garbage last year. Kamara might be better. You, Whatever you, last you, year at the Pro Bowl. Breaking up, Ian. You're you're coming through pretty poorly. I said Kamara. 
Can you hear that better? Go ahead. Better? Better? A little better. Kind of. <laughs> Just nothing but the highest quality here. Contact. Yeah, we're never going to know <laughs> what, what could happen to Kamara. <laughs> we're a ragtag podcast group. That better? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Just, no, it's just, just, like, just the video quality is pretty rough too. Like yeah. you're coming in pretty, pretty you blurry. Look, yeah, you pixelated. don't need to see me. Yeah, we don't really need to see any of us after those fucking cream puff pictures. <laughs> um, Kamara might be suspended because he Again? beat someone up. Because he yeah beat that dude up at the Pro Bowl or whatever. That was like over a year last year. year. Mm-hmm. I feel like he got that like dismissed basically. Like it's no longer a thing for him. I thought they just got it pushed past mm-hmm. the beginning of or like through last season. Uh Cardinals are taking BJ Ojulari. Okay, so a little bit of a run on edge rushers right now. We're up now, actually. We're up next. Do you think we could trade back at all? Get some more picks here. Or oh maybe? man! After after that mini run on tight ends to start, I am taking my tight end right now. I'm not taking, letting it get away. Uh, well, the, your options, unless unless we just shock the world with like Tucker Craft or like Luke yeah, I'm going Darnell Washington. Like All right, I'm going. I'm going Musgrave. I would go Musgrave over. Dude, I don't know. Washington. I I think Musgrave is an athlete, not a football player. Yeah, we draft athletes. We fucking love athletes. We love projects. Everything you're saying is true, and I don't like it right now. <laughs> I was gonna make that comment to you earlier. Like Brian Gutekunst is like the epitome of like Moneyball. Like as a GM, like he doesn't. I feel like he doesn't even like look at like actual football players. He doesn't draft for instinct. I guess we'll find out if we end up drafting Brian Branch, whether he does or not. Like Brian Branch probably off his board completely because he doesn't test well. But yet again, if you look at him on tape, he's, he's a football player. Well, like I, I just, I think the bigger issue with branch is, you know, it, I think in some circumstances, Gutekunst is willing to look past the, the RAS score. Um, but the thing is, Branch, the majority of his snaps came as a slot defender. Darnell Savage already does that. That's Savage's best role. We Darnell need, Savage. like, an actual legit deep safety. Darnell Savage is just about gone. He ain't lasting best this year. I, I know that, but, like, I just... We're drafting we're for the we, future. We need, a, we need a deep safety. That's what we need. Uh, put a fucking corner in the slot. I don't need a safety in the slot. We're probably like if we draft him, and we're drafting Brian Branch's, or we're drafting uh, Savage's replacement, basically. So, yeah. I think Savage would have been better as the free ranging safety because of his speed and stuff. Like, I didn't, dude, the, like, he like he's not he a good was coming player. on strong a couple years ago, and then Joe Barry came and fucking ruined him. It, it's like I think Barry's defense is too complicated, and and players yeah. have to overthink it. And you just gotta let guys play. He's gonna probably end up going to another team and just balling out, and you know, being a being a star. He'll probably be like another Micah Hyde. You know, like in fact, I, I can't really say that because Micah Hyde was actually kind of good for us. Like he did not suck whatsoever. No, we just. He was still playing corner for you guys, wasn't he? Yeah. He, and he played pretty good at corner, too. And he played really good as a punt returner. Well, he's a much better safety than corner, yeah. I'll tell you that much. We didn't even have good safety play when we had height either. It just didn't make sense. Oh, Jalari. Uh, might be looking for him. All right, man. So let's... I'm going to take a quick look at the board. So you guys are set that this is going to be a tight end. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm Musgrave. It's, it's such a – dude, we don't have a starting caliber tight end. We don't have one on the roster. 
and, what about and line? You guys take a guard or a center I, uh, Andrew I mean, and I were Tittman, talking about that Torrance, earlier. Like, I, I could, not yeah, bad I could value see here. Torrance. I could see Torrance, but I just think tight end is such a desperate need, and and Darnell Washington is the perfect Mercedes Lewis replacement. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, I, that, that's my Mercedes. pick, but we're <laughs> but we're gonna go with Musgrave. I was gonna say is that that feels like the problem though. Or hey, Lewis. we. We pick again in like two or three picks. Let's just fucking get them both. No, it's a double up. And I have two I, tight ends. I then. would not be opposed to it. Like the the tight end room is so barren. Like we, yeah, like get two different types in there. I wouldn't hate it. Just Another take one of those things. dudes in like that's, the fifth round. That's what the Patriots didn't. The Patriots do that with like um, Hernandez yeah, and with Gronk, like second and third round. Or something like that. Like they were back to backs and right, well, shut your fucking mouth, buddy. Pick us in. Oh, you fucker. Hey, don't say it. Yeah, you don't know you're all that ahead of us. However, it just came through on mine. Like, not to pick, but... Yeah, it's Musgrave. <sighs> yeah, Why well, right. that's not when you got that mad? Dude, Musgrave it's completely different. I yeah, I just hope they can turn him into a football player and not a track athlete. All right, Andrew, you liked him. Sell sell me on him. Tell me everything good about him. He's an athlete. <laughs> yeah. Adult. That's all you got. Well, he was a five-star recruit, I, I believe. I mean, he's I, he's a he's an okay route runner. I mean, that's going to be like, like he's got yeah, all the physical he traits. Has two career touchdowns. I don't give a shit about his fucking touchdowns. They come and go. Dawson Knox to... had zero in his college career. I don't give a flying fuck about Knox touchdowns. Is a fifth round pick. Look at that! Look at that throw! Look at that catch he just made. Don't know Washington's not making. Why are they the showing Jets like fans? That. Oh, they're up. You think Jets go offensive line here? Look, we can. Oh yeah, look at that! Look at that bubble screen. No, they got so roasted. They're and and he catches plays down the seam. Like we can send him on seam routes and like hit him in a route going like down the seam. Tight ends don't usually do that. It's pretty rare for us to be able to like branch him out and like. Is this really going away? That. I have it just selected on the draft. What? What is Ian talking about right now? I'm not. I'm not sure. Is he? It talking? just it cut away to the Kings Warriors. Oh. So I gotta go out into the draft apparently. Well, the Jets ran ran up and got their pick. Uh, their biggest needs, lineman. I would imagine this is probably going to be a lineman. Maybe yeah. Tip him. Yeah. Him I believe. Lawrence. I believe he was the top ranked center in the draft. Him or John Michael Schmitz were like the two, but. That's what I think. Um, I mean, they could go guard, but they just selected uh, Elijah. Uh, yeah, Elijah Vera Tucker is pretty good for them. So, you know, do you, do you get a... Yeah. I mean, they really needed a tackle and um, bumped in front of last night. Cody, this is really going to make you mad. In addition to playing football, Luke Musgrave also competitively skied. One athlete, yeah. Dude, I want my tight ends to be competitive <laughs> sumo wrestlers, not skiers. You are an old school guy. This is 2023. Tight ends, tight ends need to do more than just block these days. Dude, Darnell Washington had like a 9.7 res. Like he, 
he has room to grow as a receiver, man. He, he's not just a blocker. He's going to be too good of a blocker that you're not even going to want him to go out. Yeah. And and maybe uh, we'll get him here in two more picks. As we maybe. Said. Uh, interesting that Tipman here is from Wisconsin. <laughs> so Aaron Rodgers is his new starting center. Uh, just going to be a reminder of of the great state he left behind. Good. I think they need to address it and get some help for Rodgers and backs there. So we got Indianapolis up right now. Uh, frankly, they could use help everywhere. They're one of the worst teams in the league. Um, they traded away Stephon Gilmore. I could see them going corner here. And I could see, like you said, anything. Branch. Benton. I mean, things I could see for them. Hmm. They just they should have waited that. and took in Hendon Hooker here. Yeah. Um. Well, no, they took Richardson. So. I mean, they should have taken somebody else. They just showed a stat that the Colts are the only team in the NFL history to have five quarterbacks with at least five or at least twelve starts in five consecutive seasons. So pretty much they they're like, well, this one didn't work. Let's get a new one. This one didn't work. You think it's gonna be offense or defense? Defense. Probably. I think this might be Brian Branch. I could see secondary for sure. But, but I mean, the culture all set at receiver. They got Isaiah McKenzie. Oh. Yeah. Dude. So Colts, Colts are probably actually. Let's think of it this way: uh, taking Anthony Richardson, and they they have a pretty strong offensive line, and and Jonathan Taylor with their run game, um, and. You know, the Eagles head coach came from Indy. Maybe they're going to try to just go with the Eagles model and, and build an elite running game around uh, a rugby quarterback and not really care. Well, I shouldn't say they don't care about the passing game. The, the Eagles went out and loaded up on receiver, but, but the running game is what makes that team go. Uh, yeah. A bottom five roster this coming season. They need a lot of help. Dude, this ABC broadcast is just garbage. They literally, yeah, whenever a player just... picks. They'll show so like 10 seconds of tape, and then it's just these assholes talking. I'm so mad I had to switch to this ABC. I need to get see if I get ESPN. <laughs> All right. Um, Colts are going with uh, Julius Brents. Okay. Corner. So, trying now to get the replacement for Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, we're back on the clock, Cody. What does this mean? I gotta see if I if that ABC. All right, so back on the clock. Um, I I think I think you still have to go offense here. You you gotta put more weapons around Love. Look, I we, we can try to get a safety in the third. Um. I mean, I, I really would not be opposed to taking but Washington. We, and but we do need some receivers, though. I was going to say receiver spot. I mean, Cedric Tillman's there if you're looking for size. Yeah, I just I would feel you more like comfortable all the small trading, guys. 
I would feel more comfortable trading back if, if we want to take a receiver. I don't think any of them are worth it at this spot. And also, there were rumors that Green Bay likes uh, Hyatt, uh, and I I would not be happy with that. He, he's a no. small guy. He's t- uh, Deshaun Jackson, maybe. Like, he's fast. He runs good, you know, speed. Lions traded up. We traded we with the Lions. Wow, we trade. Okay, well the okay. Well, Lions are loaded with picks. So Dude, this is two years in a row that we've traded with division rivals. What is happening to the NFL? Bunch of where's the cutthroatness that used to 48 be forty-eight oh. and one fifty-nine. Okay, so one fifty-nine is what like a rounder. So Green Bay must have been like, hey, we like like five guys. So yeah, dude, I mean to move back three spots, yeah, I don't, I don't mind that. Pick up a fifth. <laughs> How fucking bad are you going to be if they take like Darnell Washington right here, though? I could I mean, see that happening too because Detroit's a old school Smash Mouth style of play. They got three running backs on their team now, so and they need a tight. Yeah, and they need a tight end. I could totally see Darnell Washington being a. Being a Dan Gamble type player for sure. I did hear rumors that DeAndre Swift might get traded tonight, though. Well, dude, after taking fucking Jamar Gibbs at at uh, twelve, um, but dude, Lions aren't going to take Darnell Washington. They took Sam Laporta at pick thirty-four. Oh yeah, they took um, Laporta. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you think that until they double up on tight end, take our strategy. You think Arizona flag for the season with all the picks they're getting for next year? Yeah, you're breaking up. I I can't even understand what you're saying. I'll just tell you, Cody. <laughs> Who do I want? There's, I mean, there's still a few. Here, Pop, Papa's going to go grab a oh, beer. Oh, Ian just left. You'll have to come back in. Who are the Lions taking, then? Oh, wow. They're taking Brian Branch. Detroit's taking Brian Branch. Um, Detroit's taking Brian Branch. Okay. Okay. I'm not broken up about that. Dude, I mean, honestly, you look at this draft, Detroit has literally taken like all of the lowest value positions. Their first pick was a running back. Second pick, inside linebacker. Third pick, safety. They're going to take a kicker in the third? <laughs> Maybe. Like, the I'm... So the Lions must literally feel, feel like they're good with their with their roster right now. Like, they're just filling... Like, they're basically drafting, like, not really feel like need, just who they feel like complements their team. Like, they're not... All right. 
You there, Ian? I was, I was just about to text you. I was so afraid you'd abandoned us. The Lions. Is it any better? Brian Actually, Branch. Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. Brian Branch. Brian oh. Branch is off the board to the Lions. So what I was trying to get at was the pick earlier where Detroit traded up with Arizona to get Laporta. They ended up getting a future third round pick for next year. Do you think this is just Arizona saying, "See ya"? Our quarterbacks hurt. Like, we'll we'll just kick it to next year. Well, I mean, it is new coaching staff and new GM, right? Or yeah. is the GM still the same? Um, I mean, I know it's a new coach. Um, I don't know if it's a new GM. I can't remember. Yeah, I mean, they could definitely look at this as a you know build a new foundation kind of year. He looks so mad. He does not look happy. Well, do, uh, so while you were gone, uh, we were talking about the fact that the Lions, if you go by positional value, they're having about the worst draft you could possibly have. They take a running back at 12, inside linebacker at 18, now a safety at 45 that they traded up for, a tight end um, that they probably could have waited till at least here. Yeah, like literally none of these positions are, are considered, you know, top value positions. It's, you know, it's it's interesting. Andrew looked at it like, you know, they they must be so happy with their roster that they're just, you know, taking, you know, who they definitely think is the best player available, which maybe. Uh, but I don't know, man. It seems cocky to me. We'll see if think, it works think out. Maybe they got a little full of themselves winning a few games at the end of the year and, uh, you know, flirting with the playoffs for the first time and since 2016. Yeah, I mean, maybe Dan Campbell and the GM just feel like they're comfortable enough. You know, they're, they're heading in the right direction that whatever, let's take who we feel the most confident in and – you know, we've we've got a little bit of a buffer here if we screw this all up. You know, I don't know. He does look pissed. <laughs> right? He looks like like why stay and go for round two if you're gonna look miserable. <laughs> Probably knows that he's gonna have to work hard in Detroit. He's going to have to start biting kneecaps or they're going to cut him. <laughs> it's probably like, darn, I'm a vegetarian. I don't want to go play for Detroit. <laughs> you think it's interesting that Will Levis decided to go home? Like, I don't know. Doesn't that look like it's kind of selfish? Co I feel Cody like made it's a not uncommon. Cody made a comment that he was eating a banana with the peel still on earlier. Yeah. No, he, he wasn't. A video of this asshole eating... A banana just chopping into the peel. It was horrifying. <laughs> that's that's so disturbing on so many levels. That's why he fell out of the first. I believe it. I believe that that was the number one reason. Only a psychopath would do that. Wait, I thought we had picked 48. Did we just trade again? Tampa's on the clock at 48. You must have because it... I had just looked before you said that, and it said Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, it still shows Green Bay at 48 on my end, so ABC Whoa. really keeping up, uh, keeping on top of things here. <sighs> Which, dude, whatever. I don't hate it. Like, they're... Looking at the board, there's no one I'm in love with right now. You know, I really like Darnell Washington, but since we just took Musgrave, like, I'm assuming we're probably not taking another tight end in the wow. second. So you moved Our, back hey, we to two 50 spots. and picked up 179, which we're must just, be what, a six rounder? Yeah, probably six, late fifth, fifth or six. six. Yeah. So we're just trying to, like, we made a comment yesterday. We don't, we're in cap hell. We're just trying to round out our roster with some late, late round picks. And we're taking the second round to be able to do it, looks like. I mean, you could take a couple of those and try and move up in the third. Yeah. No, I I think we, we have four seventh-round picks. Um, yeah, and there's no way you're picking too. four seventh-rounders. Like, 
Yeah, especially because I mean they're just camp bodies pretty much. Right. So it's like you want to you want to package some stuff and move around. Uh, we we could see a really really busy day three for the Packers. Well, shoot at this rate, you just picked up two more picks. So what do you got? Seven picks in the in day three. Yeah, Bills Bills are now down to five picks overall. <laughs> Who is this? So, Eon White. Oh yeah, sorry, I already saw that on Twitter. I mean, I will say I don't, I don't love seeing some of these players get scooped off the board when we could have, could have had a chance at one, but. Yeah, dude, I don't, I don't know. It's like, who stands out to you as head and shoulders, uh, you know, a tier above everyone else? Like, I I think everyone is just grouped so evenly right now. I'm kind of fine just keep moving back and collecting picks. Uh, I, I think you guys could use a receiver, but... Well, yeah, no, I think we could use a receiver too, but... Like I'm, I'm kind of fine if if we can grab one toward the end of the second. Like I think we could probably find someone I'd be happy with. Oh, so you think there's like a couple that you'd be okay with, type of thing? Like later, not like yeah. one guy. No, I mean I I think um you know Tillman, uh, Rashi Rice, uh, those are probably my top two right now. Uh, I think A.T. Perry in the third. Um, you know, I, th I think there's some options. Uh, what, about, what about Marvin Mims? Yeah, I, I got to think Mims is going to come soon. I I don't know anything about Mims. I wrote him down as the guy to watch. I didn't hate his tape. How big is he? He's not huge, if I remember correctly. None of the receivers are that big, well, though. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's 5'11", 180. The only that's, receivers that's I pay high. attention to are, are bigger receivers. <laughs> I mean, Rasheed Rice is 6'1". I mean, he's not. Mm, Jartavius Martin, a safety, goes to the commanders. He he was one of the guys I had my eye on as a safety um, uh, just because he'd met uh, Green Bay's typical athletic thresholds. Um, but I had him at more of a round three kind of guy. I have a, I think I, I think I told you, was it Sydney Brown was one I had an eye on. Yeah, Sydney Brown is probably my my top one. Uh, Anthony Johnson Jr. Um, he's another guy who, who he was a corner who converted to safety last year and and played very well. Daniel Scott was another one I was kind of interested in. I think you guys should draft uh, Tank Dell. Fuck you. <laughs> That's I hope. <laughs> Five eight one sixty. I want. I just want to see Cody like melt. <laughs> Dude, who do you want the Bills to take tonight? Um, seeing Keanu Benton drop, I'd almost, almost. Well, I was gonna say trade your fourth, but we already did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's who I would like to see. I'd love to see the defensive line, whether it's edge or interior. And linebacker needs to be addressed, like badly. You know, after kind of taking the the luxury pick of a tight end, you know, or an offensive weapon, whatever you want to want to call him. Like, so I would be happy with that. Um, you know, some of these other guys, I, I think there's a little bit of a drop off. You know, as far as defensive tackle goes. Yeah. No, um, I, I was literally just about to say the same thing. Like, look, looking at fuck. D linemen, like Benton is the last one that I really think is is a potential difference maker. And then, then you're just getting into developmental guys, I yeah. think. Who were the guys? Who'd they take? Why are you so mad? I put stars next to certain guys in the second round. I like so far... Pick 45 was a star guy, and now pick 48 is another star guy. Um, Who was it? Or Cody you want to wait? Cody Mock. 
Oh, Cody Mock. I thought he was a Green Bay guy because he's he's a pretty athletic offensive tackle. I mean, he's you know small school guy, you know, but the Bucks clearly aren't scared of that. They drafted uh, Ali, Ali Marpet, who went to Hobart. <laughs> I thought there was a chance that Cody Mock, if he developed a little bit and kept refining his craft, he could end up being like the best offensive tackle to come out of this class in a, in a few years. And doesn't he, he looks like Josh Sitton to me, kind of? Like he looks like dude. He he, he looks tackle. like he's fucking running moonshine, um, <laughs> dude. He looks like Thor. He looks yeah. like freaking Thor. No, I mean, dude, I I really think after passing on offensive tackle last night, I don't think you're going to see Green Bay touch one until, you know, maybe the fourth or fifth. Like, I, I think we're going to roll with our current offensive line and let them grow. They're just like, screw it. Well, dude, no, it's like the current, like the starting five, um, as well as I would actually say the top six, I feel pretty confident in uh, my my whole thing for taking an offensive tackle last night was just looking toward the future. David Bakhtiari has a forty million dollar cap hit next year. He's not going to be on the team, and then our other starting he's tackle is going to be a free agent. He's, so, he's not even, we're not even going to be able to trade him at that. We're going to have to strip cut him. Ain't no yeah. team, no team's going to take on a forty million dollar cap hit for a tackle. No or way. Especially tackle who hasn't tackle. played a full season in three years. Is that his mom? Is he like just having that in like a fire hall? Yeah. Who is that girl next to him? His mom? Dude, does this guy not know that like teeth implants exist today? <laughs> you, you can take care of this, my guy. I I dig it. He doesn't want one. He's got to be a hockey player or something at some point. Dude, I actually, that, that was one of the things I was reading about Lucas Van Ness. Is uh, apparently he was a big hockey player for most of his life. Yeah, I watched some. I watched some hockey film on him, laying some dudes out. No, what, one of the things I read about him that that uh, I really appealed to me um, was apparently he has never had a major injury. And uh, I, I guess his, his dad is a chiropractor, and and he just made like proactive uh, body care like a priority for him throughout his life. Um, yep. So yeah, I, I just always get nervous with guys who've had injury histories. So hearing that about Van Ness definitely uh, that was one of the factors that has me warming up on him. Well, you uh, you won't like this either. Uh, Musgrave had some injury concerns that Green Bay Michael Staff had to clear him for. Yeah, I know. That's another one of the reasons why I was down on Musgrave. But if Green Bay clears him, he's pretty healthy. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I will I will say this. It's a swing for the fences pick. I mean, you're hoping that he turns into an elite top 10, top 5 tight end. Um, you know, with that kind of athleticism, the potential is there, but and I don't probably need the- three years to develop. I, think, I think they think had Darnell to help Washington's ever gonna. Darnell Washington's net ceiling is not as high as Musgraves. That's true. What, what did you say, Ian? I think they had to help Jordan Love. Like, I I agree with that. I just don't know that Musgrave was the best way to do it. Well, well, Musgrave's probably not going to help this year or next year, really. But in three years, maybe. I don't know. You can throw him in the slot and have him run some routes, be a matchup, you know. Ricky tight ends are usually just dick, though. They don't do anything. I mean, look at Kyle Pitts. He hasn't done anything in two years. I know, dude. Everyone's like, oh, man, he's a unicorn. Best tight end in 20 years. That's what worries me about the Bills taking a tight end. I mean, I know the Bills have three years, but, like, come on. All right. Uh... Keanu, no, not Keanu. Uh, who was it? Who's on the clock before you guys? I don't know. I'm watching a commercial for a gun shop right now. I just watched a Gillette commercial. <laughs> um, Pittsburgh. 
Dude, I fuck, I love Pittsburgh taking Joey Porter Jr. at the top of the second. Yeah, I think that's great. I hope they don't take Benton. They, they, they do. Yep. They do. Um, yep. Count Benton. God. Damn it. We we saw some. I mean, it's the next tier, but all the notable names just went off the board in the forty-five to forty-nine range. Now I want the Bills to just go linebacker. I guess if Trenton Simpson or Drew Sanders, I guess makes it. Otherwise, there's some wide receivers I'd like him to take, but. I mean, take a tight end and a receiver. Like, just go all in on offense. They screw the defense. It wouldn't surprise me to see Green Bay take Jalen Hyatt here. It wouldn't surprise me either. Which, like, I guess if you look at him as a slot only guy, jitterbug kind of weapon, like, we don't have for a, a slot second round pick. All. I don't hate it, but I just. Like, I would prefer a receiver who, like, has the potential to develop into an actual number one out on the perimeter. Hyatt's never going to be that guy. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know his ceiling. Like, his best case is is a high variance number two. Yeah. Like, which, you know, pairing with Christian Watson, I mean, I guess could Ooh, be worse. damn, we rushed that pick in. Didn't waste any time at all. Yeah, we... <laughs> We we knew our guy. Hey, you trade it back twice. The guy must have still been there, whoever you wanted. Is this L- Leroy Butler announcing for us? Freddie Jackson's announcing for the Bills. Jaden Reed. Okay. I don't know anything about this this Reed fellow. I didn't, I didn't um, look him up either. However, I saw he was the number one rated still on uh, ESPN. Wow, this is uh, this is surprising because his R- RAS score fucking sucks. Five ten one eighty. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, well, he's actually more like 5'11". They just yeah. listened to 5'11", 187. I know, it's, it said 5'10", and, and 7 eighths. Yeah. 187 was what it said. Um, so but I had to ground down. Just so bad, bad size, bad RAS score, haven't even heard of him, played at Michigan State, and I, I don't know, man. He was at Western Michigan. All right, here. Do you want me to to read his draft bio? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, so NFL.com had his draft projection in rounds four to five, by the way. I'll just throw (laughs) that out there. Utility utility wideout with the ability to take snaps at multiple receiver positions while offering both kickoff and punt return talent. Reed looks smaller in many of his matchups, but he really is deterred by size. He's too tight-hipped for start-stop routes on the tree, but he operates with good route speed and should improve his ability to separate with additional development and experience the next level. His ball skills and feel for position and deep throws and jump balls are unquestioned. Limiting his focus drops on short and intermediate throws will be critical to becoming a long-term NFL contributor. His strengths are that he's highly competitive against bigger, stronger corners, accelerates to his top speed in a hurry, keeps routes moving at an elevated tempo, Good ball skills, clever hands, makes winning plays on back shoulder throws, can be elusive after the catch, and has three career punt return touchdowns. His weaknesses are that he's got a high percentage of career catch tries that were contested, quicker than fast with average deep separation, hip tightness in and out of quickness on route breaks, doesn't always finish his routes, and loses catch focus working into the middle of the field. Yeah, oh, he's not, not impressed. Uh, not not in love with that. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and move right on to the Dolphins taking Cam Smith. I would have been happy with Cam Smith. Yeah, but then so they just got Ramsey. 
Dude, I you guess can nev- you can never have enough good corners, especially playing their, in the fucking AFC East. Who's the cornerback that they just lost? Murphy? Uh, Byron Jones. Byron Jones. That's what I was so they, they, they got Ramsey and Xavier Howard still. Yeah. And then uh, they'll put Cam Smith in the slot probably. Yeah. I mean, like you said, I mean, you can't have enough good ones, but that's their first pick of the whole draft because of, you know. Well, I mean, dude, they're to, to diddle Tom Brady or whatever. They're <laughs> completely stacked on offense. So, you know, you go defense, and I guess, you know, it's the top pass rushers are all gone. So, why not take uh, a secondary guy? Yeah, they kind of had a. A big teardrop for what they were looking for, <laughs> for it to be their first pick. Who is this? AJ Wright. Do I feel like the Seahawks have taken a running back in the top two rounds, like fucking five years running? <laughs> Him with Kenneth Walker? Do they, do they still have Rashad Penny? No. He just went somewhere. Oh, God. Where did he go? Right. Eagles. Eagles is who Rashad Penny is now with. Hmm. That's right. Because they got rid of Miles Sanders and Wait, Are Miles you... Sanders is gone? Yes. Who who's he yeah, right now? Where did he sign? Did he sign yet? Yes, he plays for the Holy cow, what team did he go to? What's that? Panthers. Yeah. Okay. Four year deal. Well, Cody, this might make you feel a little bit better. Um, Jaden Reed did draw some comparisons to like Terry McLaurin. Like, that's if he develops, that's the type of player you could be getting with Jaden Reed. All you did was remind me of the fact that we took Jay Sternberger over Terry McLaurin. <laughs> that didn't work out for you? Yeah, well, maybe this is our uh, redemption then. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll have to check out some of his tape. I, I, I really had never even heard of this dude, so we'll see. Um, you know, Musgrave, I I understand Musgrave, at least, you know, you're taking a, a home run swing and hoping that you can develop them. Um, I don't expect much out of Musgrave this year. Hopefully you can get some contributions next year. Reed, I, I don't know. Total mystery to me. I am reading more stuff from other places. I see exactly why he's a Packer now. Things like. Plays all over the formation. You lined up at X, Z, slot, and running back. Boom. That's a Packer player right there. Understands when and where to sit down in open zones and effectively find space during a scramble drill. Boom. That's something else Green Bay values. Uh, He's a willing and able blocker. Big time. There you go. He's going to be a slot guy who can who likes to block. He's This guy's got Green Bay written all over him now. And he's only 22. I would have taken Darnell Washington. Hey, he's still out there. We can move up. Yeah, with all your uh, fifth round and seventh round picks. Well, dude, yeah. given our fucking like 15 year streak of horrendous third round picks, I wouldn't be opposed to just getting rid of that bitch. We'll either move up or move down. What do you think we're doing with our third round pick now, then, huh? I don't know, dude. It's like 30 picks away. 
I have no I'm idea who's going to be on the board. I'm trying to fill airspace right here, dude. I'll talk about some players who've been picked. Ask Ian Don't who ask he's, he's getting hard for as, as the Bills come up closer and closer. Linebacker. We still got a while before the Bills are up. Oh, we got. Uh, do, do you do you picks. have a preferred linebacker between Sanders or or what Trenton Simpson? Trenton Simpson probably. Um, you know he seems a little bit more prototypical because the Bills. I think. I think um, Sanders is like Milano 2.0. Like I think they're a lot of the same guy. You know, and so it makes. I mean, me Milano's wonder. pretty goddamn good. I wouldn't mind having two of them. Well, yeah, but but do you need another guy? You you need a guy that's gonna stuff the run. Like yeah. we're gonna get run all over at this point. But do, we're do, gonna have do, no do, one. Do you take a run stuffer in the second though. Undersized D tackles. We're gonna have undersized linebackers. We're gonna have DNs that want to get upfield and rush the passer. Like I know we're embracing like this new NFL, but like I watched Jonathan Taylor run all over us and us have no answer two years ago. Like and we play in Buffalo. We talk about how like, oh, we gotta be able to stop the run and come January, like, you know, and we gotta be able to run the ball and la la la. Like I don't I just see I, us going the the opposite direction. And I would actually not be shocked if the Bills think their linebackers are fine that they have in house. I don't agree with it, but they took a third round pick in Terrell Bernard last year, and he barely even played special teams for us. Um, you know, I I think they might believe in him a little bit. You know, and they also have a linebacker, Bale Inspector, that they took in the seventh round that played some special teams like you know what I think is totally different than what than what they think oh Gervin Dexter I didn't hear what he said isn't he the big nose tackle yeah 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 Yeah, six five three ten yeah I I mean like at the start of this draft cycle he was being mocked in like the fifth rounds and he kind of shot up from combine testing. Um, so like whatever. I mean, he, he could end up being a, a very good player, but I'm not like, I think he's kind of a, a space, a space filler, you know, yeah. like I um, think that's kind of what he does. His role lets it well, keeps the linebackers clean. Well, so that's that's actually an excellent transition to to you know we were talking about the Bills and the linebacker situation, and I I, I get where you're coming from there with uh, needing to stop the run, and and that has kind of been a weakness with the Bills in recent years uh, facing more physical teams. Do you think any linebacker really makes a difference there, or do, I, like personally, I feel like it's all going to start up front, and and it doesn't matter if you got Ray Lewis back there. Yeah, no, I I would love to get a a guy, you know, a defensive tackle that can keep the linebackers clean because then the linebackers, they can come up and make tackles. It doesn't matter. But, I mean, we that ship sailed when we got at Oliver. You know, the, you know, Kalijah can't see, like, you know, remake of, is a remake of Ed Oliver. Like, you know, we decided, hey, we're going to go small. And I just don't think it's panned out. You know, and we'll see. We'll see. I I think um, they tried that with Daquan Jones um, through free agency last year. He ended up being like our best defensive tackle last year, and that's because he just fills space and gets in people's ways. So, yeah, I actually I liked Daquan Jones. Uh, I was interested in him, in him as a free agent before the Bills took him. Um, yeah, like it, you need. It's not sexy, but every roster needs a space eating defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, just... and then if you're lucky, you get you get a Hall of Famer like Vince Wilfork. But the majority of space eaters, they're just lunch pail, you know, mm-hmm. undrafted or, or late round guys who they're never gonna 
pile up stats, but they're important to your team. Yeah. Oh, that was somebody I was looking at. Yeah, this Tuli 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 Um, listen, man, you play as well as Troy Palomalu. I'll remember how to say your name until then. Sorry, American Samoa. I think I, I think it's a uh, tip you lude, tip you loto, tip you loto. I have no idea. I just knew it was Tuli Tui. Um, good, good pick for the Chargers here because I mean, obviously, they, they have an elite bookend. With Joey Bosa and um, this guy had Khalil 13, Mack. He's got 13 and a half sacks last year in college. I mean, he'll he's, be a good rotational good. guy for them. You know, good for them. Yeah. Um. No. I, I. I mean, both Khalil Mack is definitely getting long in the tooth, and Joey Bosa. Um. Like, frankly, I think he's a little overrated. He started his career super hot, ran into some injuries. And, and he's still – he's a very good player, but I don't know what that I would call him elite. So getting a young buck in there to to potentially replace those guys, I like it. Do the Chiefs trade up? Are they always at 55? Hmm. It's really amazing how poor these draft broadcasts are. Like critical information, like trades, like it says it, it should traded, always be but... it should always be visible on the screen. It should not be like a little news ticker flash. Just fucking keep it up there until the pick is made and show the compensation at the same time. I mean, I don't see anything, but, oh, there we go. Lions trade 55-194, and the Chiefs trade 63-122 and 249. So basically, swap seconds, uh, early fourth, and then like a seventh. Yeah, so they traded with the Lions. We get more picks. The Lions doing a lot of wheeling and dealing in this mm-hmm. draft. I wonder who they came up for. Hmm. They don't need a center. They got Humphreys. Um, I could see them taking Jalen Hyatt. I was going to say, I was just looking. I, was, I could see him taking any of the, the wide receivers. They're taking they're taking Donnell they, Washington. Because they lost Juju. Um. Yeah, I could see him taking Cedric Tillman here. Um, because they kind of uh, just made it work last year with just anyone. Yeah, I mean they definitely <laughs> they they could use a receiver for sure. Um, yeah, I mean they're they've got Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore. Um, I dude, Sky Moore was like my favorite receiver in last year's draft. Uh, I know he didn't do a lot for Kansas City last year, but Super Bowl catching that touchdown, like I, I think you're going to see big things from Sky Moore this year. But he's a slot. Right. So is uh, Kadarius Tooney. Um, MVS, limited, you know, low-end number two, high-end number three. Like they still – they need – a legit number one. I know, and it's hard to say you're going to get that in the second round, but they really must have liked somebody. Yeah, I mean, dude, Carolina moving up to get Mingo, the more I think about it, that that was a really smart move in this draft. Like, they were just really limited uh, perimeter receivers, and and they knew they they had to go get a guy for, for Bryce Young. Yeah, well, they traded away DJ Moore just to be able to get Bryce Young. So, oh yeah, that that was stupid. Um, but 
you know, what's that's water under the bridge right there. Man, I hope Justin Fields is a bust. I mean, I think he's shown he has a halfway decent floor. Yeah, now, now everybody shown me sees, enough as a passer. Everybody sees Jalen Hurts and is like, oh, look at that's what Justin Fields is going to do. I mean, not, not exactly. Jalen Hurts drawing like, every, too much of a straight line. Like everything about Jalen Hurts just screams like rare generational leadership traits that a team will rally around. Um, I, I think he's a special player that like he had, you know, some physical concerns um, about could he be a prototypical quarterback, but he he's put it to bed, man. I, I am a Jalen Hurts believer. Uh, I don't think Justin Fields has shown anything close to that. Yeah, no. That's kind of crazy. Father, son, both drafted by the Chiefs in the first round. Okay. Well, you guys were right. Receiver. Rashi Rice, okay. I would have much preferred that to read. But... Are you serious? Yeah. Rice, Rice over Reed? Yes. He had early in the college season he had some some late first round buzz going and then he kind of cooled off. I mean yeah. they they must have felt strongly enough about him to move up. They they're probably thinking the Giants are gonna take a receiver, you know. Who knows what Chicago will do? You know, they're probably worried if he was there, Buffalo would take him. Like, you know, I think it's probably a good move to go up and get their guy. His, I'm reading about Rasheed Rice's like strengths and weaknesses. His weaknesses sound like red flags. What are they? Yeah. Can be. Like can be nonchalant through drive phase of intermediate routes. He lacks commitment to detail as a route runner. If you don't care oh, about coach, route running, dude, this you can't shit. coach fucking motivation. If you receivers are divas, if they don't want to fucking polish their, their, if they don't have the internal motivation to want to be the best. Listen, you can coach motivation more than you can coach size and speed. Yeah, you want to come? Much. You want to come teach teach in my classroom? You teach motivation. Love to see you try that. You can't teach these kids nothing these days, dude. Like All right. Well, you heard it here. The uh, the motivator of our our age, <laughs> Andrew Perello, says you can't teach these kids nothing. Can't teach them motivation. <laughs> All right. All right. So I, I I'm not arguing. Yeah, dude. If, if someone doesn't want to help themselves, it's it takes a special person to, to change that. I I will not argue that. Also says that he's too content to play jump ball. Inconsistent use of frame to shield the defender. Slow to sink and open in the zone voids. And he's a frequent free releaser who needs to prove that he can even beat press coverage. Uh, Bears. Um, Cornerback help. Ty Tyreek Stevenson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy looks white as hell. I did not expect that. What? I. They're interviewing some very, very white man right now. It is not Tyreek Stevenson. Then they're showing highlights, and he is not a white man okay all right yeah. well i was gonna say like Ty yeah. tyreek you know I, I that's the confusion man yeah. Yeah, whoever they're i don't know who the fuck tyreek stevenson oh all right oh shit this is will levis i i don't know why they're interviewing will, will white levis man. two thirds of the way into the second giants um, are already in this has got to be a receiver right 
probably. I mean, they need receiver help. They, Isaiah they Hodgins off the Bills practice squad was. I I don't know. Could they could they use offensive line help? About to tell you right now. Yeah, probably. Oh, yep. Yes, they could. Because they John just took Michael John Smith. Michael Smith. Arguably the best center in the class. Yeah, I mean him or Tipman. Yeah, we're, Tipman we're kind of both out. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good pick. Especially at this point in the draft. Yeah. Holy shit, I wouldn't dude, mind it if some one of them. This guy, he's got fucking man titties. I wouldn't draft this motherfucker. Dude, they're using offensive linemen. They're supposed that that's like a desirable trait. I wouldn't you have minded if one team. of them fell to the Bills if they ended up picking one of them to replace uh, Mitch Morris here in a couple years. Yeah, Mitch Morris is getting up there in age. He's had like six documented concussions. Oh, he's not a public facing figure. He's an offensive lineman. They can have as many concussions as they want. Oh. Dallas, so, is, Dallas so, has got to go for a tight end here. Someone's watched me varsity. Someone's watched varsity blues too many times. Darnell Washington to Dallas. You think? Did um did Ringo go the cornerback? No, not yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, see, I don't think Washington fits what Dallas would want to do though, because McCarthy. Um, oh, I mean, geez, he he, he just he wants to he wants to go five wide is is McCarthy's like preferred. So if he's taking a tight end, it's going to have to be a pass catching athletic guy. Yeah, I mean, Dallas definitely still needs receiver help. CD Lamb can't do it all on his own. I could see them taking Tillman. I know. I'm looking ahead for the Bills. I'm like, man, I wouldn't mind if they took Tillman. <laughs> Said, screw it. Let's go all in on offense. Oh my God, Dallas really. Hold on. Did that, huh? Okay. Okay. Wow. They. Okay. I. I kind of like. I don't know a ton about Shoemaker, but uh, I. I had heard of him as more of a fourth rounder. Yeah. I mean, you know, I heard him as you know oh just you know another guy a part of this deep tight end class you know a good option but Dell uh, just said fuck you darnell washington we don't want you we want wow. shoon maker we want the michigan boy we want shoon maker man yeah, I'm I'm really shocked that osiris torrance i was is. just gonna say i'm looking at torrance as an option, I'm looking at Simpson, Tillman. I just don't think there's defensive tackles right here. Like, they might as well just wait until the third round. It, it's a really bad defensive line class. Yeah. It's a bad year for them to have that as a need. Like, the... The dude from Northwestern there, the aided to Menemary Abadodori. <laughs> like, people have kind of talked him up a little bit about, you know, being power based and the opposite of what the Bills have, which is a lot of just like length and speed rushers. Like, dude, you guys, your first round pick is awesome. Why? Because of his hat? Look at his LinkedIn. Look at that guy. I like how you looked up his LinkedIn. Yeah, that's... Uh, speaking of someone who spent three years living in Utah, that seems about right. The dude's from <laughs> Vegas. Like, that's where he went to high school. God damn, that's even worse. And he, he's a, he fully converted. All right. Let's see. What do I think the Bills are going to do? Um, oh, man. So 
probably offensive line, right? I know. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Osiris Torrance. We just, pick, got, we just got. We just got. Two guards in free agency. Well, uh, tell, tell me your starting five right now. Um, I'm trying to remember the dude from Dallas that we just picked up in free agency. I don't know why I can't remember his name. Otherwise, we got um, um, Deion Dawkins. Uh, we got Mitch Morris. We have Ryan Bates. And then we have um, Spencer Brown on the right side. And they're talk is you know right tackle is the most upgradable you know but i mean right now i i can't imagine there's there's a tackle out there torrance isn't going to ever switch to tackle All right um uh what about um what are your thoughts on on uh what's his name wayne wayne morris the o oklahoma guy what position? Right tackle. Um, I don't know who you're talking about. So, all right. Well, <laughs> I guess he's <laughs> out of the equation then. Uh, Connor McGovern. That's who I, who I couldn't think of. Um, he's right guard, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, I'd rather Dwan Jones. Who are you saying attack? Oh, Wina Morris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Wanya? Wanya? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd feel better about a guy like Jones, although he's huge. That's like a, like almost like red flag huge. Like 6'8, 375. It's like, too big, man. Yeah, yeah like there, there's, there's name the point. Like how many offensive tackles over three hundred thirty-five pounds have success in the NFL? Right. No, yeah. Um if I had to guess, I think they're going O line, but I would love for them to take Cedric Tillman. And I'm not exactly sure why they're showing Hendon Hooker when the Bills are about to draft. Hmm. Imagine that's who the Bills pick. Um, Change, changing of the guard. No, yeah, we're just being prepared. Listen, the hey. Patriots took Jimmy G when they had uh, Tom Brady. It's the most important position to have uh, the most important backup position in the league. So, I mean, no one knew Carson Wentz was going to become hot garbage when the Eagles took Hurts. Yeah. Brad Jackson. Yeah. Freddie Jackson out here announcing the Bills pick. What do you think Stevie Johnson's up to these days? Honest Stevie Johnson. I think he's got a podcast, I think. Osiris Torrance. Come on, bro. We should we, we should get him on our podcast. So reach out to him. Dude, I, I like this pick for the Bills, man. Like, Josh I, Allen takes a lot of hits. Go yeah. start, give him the best offensive line you can. Yeah, he I mean, I just – and it, it shouldn't keep them from drafting the, the you know, best player at this point. But he just, held his like, own against Jalen Carter. Now you've made, like, such a massive guard. Like, but, I mean, what's that matter, right? You just want the best guys, like – you know, you're not there to, to uh, right. you know, hurt to wonder if people's feelings are going to get hurt. Like, well, well so you, you said that too. they just signed McGovern as a right guard. Who, who's your left guard? Um, uh, uh, Ryan Bates. They tendered him last year when the Bears made him an offer. Um, I mean, they matched it. I, um, I don't, I don't know Ryan Bates. Does he sound like a replaceable guy to you? Um. <laughs> Yeah, he's replaceable. Um, his upside too is that he's the backup center. So the so, thought sounds is, like they're making him he, a utility lineman and kicking Torrance out to well, left guard. So he used to be a utility lineman. You know, the thought is, our right, Mitch Morris's time, you know, coming to an end, and Bates just slides into center now. Yeah. 
Cincinnati Bengals take cornerback DJ Turner, officially the fastest man in this draft class. I think he ran a four two six. Whew, that is fast. Four two six. Holy cow. Yeah. Um I you know, I like the pick for the Bills. I um you know, as a as a fan you get caught up and kind of thinking you got your guys and you know, I I think it'll uh I think it'll be a, an upgrade from what they have now. Um you know, they've been looking for you know, somebody that can be a road grader and maybe make some more lanes in the running game. You know, Torrance is that guy. Um, that's for sure. You know, I guess we'll see, um, you know, pass blocking how he does. Um, but uh, but I, I'm coming around to it. You know, the more I think about it, um, I think it'll make the, the running game better. I think it'll help James Cook. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Like a lot of people, you know, they're, are the Bills going to, Try to move up for B. John Robinson. Like they just took James Cook in the second last year. Like yeah. it I I think giving some offensive line help to to let guys like Cook, you know, Coach. give him a better chance. Uh and, and do you still have Singletary or did he leave in free no, agency? No, he went to Houston. We got um Damian Harris in free agency. Okay. Well that that's solid. Harris so. is fine. We got Naheen Himes still. Um, we re-signed him to a better deal, and um, and James Cook. I mean, Cook's yeah. gonna get a shot, and you know, from the first game last year to the last, I mean, he's a way different player. He looked like freaking a fish out of water in this first game. He looked so overwhelmed the first couple games, but by the end of the season, man, he was like a legit contributor. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I think his skill sets works well with what the Bills are trying to do. Um, you know, they got those other guys in there too. I think Damian Harris is a good pickup. I mean, shoot, he was like one point seven million dollars for one year. Like, sure, yeah. you know. I mean, like that that is the perfect argument for why you don't take a first round running back, right? But, like. like I do. I I say this as a former fullback. I I love the run game, but just financially, the value is not there, man. The Bills will never do it. I don't think the Bills will, with this current mindset and regime in there. They're like, I you know, if Bijan dropped to twenty seven, sure, it would have been really interesting to see, you know, to put that to the test. Obviously, he went eighth, so, um. But uh, I don't think they'll ever draft one in the first round because of the financial commitment. Yeah. They're fine getting a second, third round pick, recycle them after their rookie deal, hoping to strike gold. Like, well, dude, and, and it almost seems by design that Josh Allen's the best runner on the team. Yeah, I mean, and there is there has been like a lot of talk of you know Josh is going to hold up that way forever, like. You know, you got to eventually get somebody that can take that pounding. That's a running back, and I'm like, yeah, okay. You find that dude in the fifth round, like, you know, that bowling ball that just runs straight forward. Like, you know, you can find a ton of those in any draft. So, yeah. But, um, uh, I need to pee real quick, please. but when I come back, I want to uh, I want to ask Ian some questions about the AFC East. Grab me a cream puff while you're at it. Just, oh man, I I'm a all on Is a commercial about to come in? What's happening? <laughs> I'm I'm on commercial right now. So is this, is this like a better help? Are you about to do a better help read? You know, <laughs> I'm gonna go yeah, fill dude, my let's water. Let's do a then. tarot reading for the AFC East. All right, I guess I guess we just taking a taking a drink break then. Okay, just go to then. See you, everyone.
Eggs are on the clock. Oh, wow. Tight end. Brenton Strange. And uh, Darnell Washington continues to fall. What's surprising, too, because Tucker Craft was on the board. Okay. I think we got two more picks for the second round. Oh, he's a pretty good blocker. And he can line up outside. All right. Are there going to be like seven tight ends in the I second was, round? I was, think, I was thinking about the fact that there might be a record stat for tight ends taken in the second round. Yeah. There's been a lot. Texan straight up wide receiver. All right. Juice. Juice Scruggs. What a name. Sounds like an offensive lineman. Did would even survive? What happened? Yeah, how many tight ends? One, two, three, four, five. Five tight ends in the second round. Wow. That's crazy. That's Yeah, it's like ten percent of the draft of the, the of the second round was all tight ends. And Darnell Washington was not one of them. Yeah, the teams are just not sold on Darnell Washington. Man, there's gonna they gotta break records with this tight end class. Like for a number of tight ends even drafted. I mean Tucker Craft's still there, Darnell Washington, Zach Koontz, like Hey. Darnell Washington just got passed over by for Bretton Strange went before Darnell Washington. Yeah, I saw that a man named Juice just got drafted. Yeah. The juice is loose. I you can ask Ian your questions here in a second. I do want to let you know that Jaden Reed is going to wear number one for the Packers, which will be the first Green Bay hey. Packer, the first Packer to wear the number one since Curly Lambeau in 1926. How is Curly's number not retired? That's know. insane. Who took uh, number zero for you guys? Mm, I don't know if we have a number zero yet. Uh, what are you eating? That looks delicious now, too. It's cookie cake. Oh, cookie cake! What's cream the cream puffs and cookie cake? Come on, draft night! Come on, draft night cookie cake, baby. Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims. I think that means Judy or um, uh, nah. What's his face is out. Nah. Who's their other receiver? Not Kirk. Court. Court. Um, Sutton, right? Sutton. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't, I don't think either of them are out. And they I still mean, got, he's, uh, he's what, K.J. Hamlin? Um, Hamler. Hamler, yeah. And um, Tim Patrick. but Tim Patrick? Just, I think tore his ACL for the second time, maybe. 
Dude, like honestly, there there's a ton of talent on the Broncos roster. It's just like no one expected Russell Wilson to be as bad to be as he was. Such garbage. It, it, and like I think it's become clear now that like Wilson is overconfident in himself and Pete Carroll like knew how to manage him and then Nathaniel Hackett was just in totally over his head. Hackett looked so bad. Is he in New York? Yeah, he's the offensive yeah. coordinator. Yeah, that was yeah. part of the fucking recruiting campaign to get Rodgers. Rodgers wouldn't be a Jet if uh, Hackett wasn't wasn't there. Hackett used to be with the Bills. I'll really? I didn't there. know that. I'll yeah, he was so old course. Was that before Jacksonville? Yep. Or after? Before? I think he went with Doug Marone. Yep. Yeah, he was. He was the coordinator with Doug Marone. They both came from Syracuse. He had Syracuse, then Buffalo, then Jacksonville, then he went to yep. Green Bay. And... Mm-hmm. Um, what is this? Yeah, so... this in between rounds. Here, well, real quick, the Bears Sorry. pick is in, so we'll we'll wait for that. But then I I I did want to ask you about uh, the intriguing AFC East this year. I don't even know if they're gonna do picks. Are they just gonna go through them, or are they gonna? I guess I don't remember what they do in the third round. I I don't know. When you hit day show. three, they just. They just yeah, they just talk about day one. They've got on like five three. picks, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh, yeah. The last eight picks have been this guy, this guy, this guy. And I won't forget. I could see that. Chicago taking uh, Keely Ringo here. Man. Get the a handshake from awful. Roger Goodell. Man. Man, what an honor. What an honor. Wow, uh, looks like there's a lot less people than yesterday there. They're doing an overhead shot. And looks kind of sparse there. The second and third round. All right, well, the Bears pick's been in for a while. They're not saying shit, so... Um, <laughs> all right. They're doing this salute to arms forces. Are you not seeing it on ABC Speed? Yeah, no, I, I see it. Um, I see it. Is that flowers? What is that? Oh, okay. Are, are they about to? Nope, they're caught in a commercial. All right. So, um, AFC East. Uh, obviously, the the huge tectonic shift is Rogers coming to the Jets. Uh, but Miami, you know, they pick up Ramsey on, on defense and, uh, and if Tua can fucking stay healthy, that that's an elite offense, um, in the second year of their head coach. Like, it's crazy that that was first year that they had that much success. Um, and then, you know, New England, like. It's fucking Bill Belichick, man. Like they're always going to be competitive, and, and and Mac Jones, you know, he was hurt for a lot of the year, so just ultra ultra competitive division. How do you see that pecking order shaking out? Well, I mean, I'm going to be a little biased, probably, but um, you know, I think the Bills are still the team to beat. I mean, when you win the division for three straight years. I mean, who else are you going to pick, you know? So I think that the Bills are still on top until they're not. Um, you know, I think it'll be interesting. Um, you know, we talk about 39. Is, is Rodgers going to be the same guy? Is he going to start falling off that cliff? Um, you know, it was make or break for that coaching staff. Um, you know, so they had to make the move. Um you know, if Tua can stay healthy, I mean, shoot, the dude's lost, like, only a couple games that he's played. Like, he just hasn't been healthy enough to play. Um, you know, Miami really scares me. Um, for whatever reason, the Jets don't really scare me. Um, you know, they've got the running back. They've now got the quarterback. You know, 
they've they've got you know a second year receiver you know that uh that that should be you know only continue to 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 improve on his rookie of the year you know um campaign last year so um surprisingly maybe you know i think the the dolphins are are going to be you know uh, right there at second um and i think the jets will be right behind them um again maybe i'm in the minority um because the jets have the offensive and defensive rookie of the year like you know that they've they've seemed to just be a quarterback away um you know and now they got that guy you know i don't I don't know. I don't know if it'll be as smooth sailing as everybody seems to want it to be in New York Jets land. You know, of you just take a Hall of Fame quarterback from one team and you just throw him on another team and it's seamless. So I'd probably put them third. And I think the Patriots are garbage. I think their rosters like just devoid of real meaningful talent. Like you look at their guys and you're like Oh, you know, they're okay. That guy's okay. Like, oh, he's okay. Like, and you realize you just went through their whole roster and nobody's like a standout. I mean, like you have these terrible rosters and you could be like, oh, well, I could see that guy, you know, has the future to be a superstar. Like, I just don't see anyone on the Patriots roster that's like a superstar. Like, anywhere. (laughs) You know, they've just let them all go. They, They let you know, everyone walk. They've tried to do this. Oh, we'll just figure out the receiver thing. But like now they're starting to realize like, oh, you can do that when Tom Brady's your quarterback, you know, not when, you know, I think Mac Jones is fine. You know, I, I think he's serviceable and, you know, a top 15 he's Andy Dalton, man. Just yeah. like I predicted when he was drafted, Andy Dalton. Right. And, but you need to surround him with weapons and they've yet to do that. You know, they keep going, Oh, we'll get a third round receiver and Oh, we'll, you know, blow a bunch of money on uh, John U. Smith and Hunter Henry for no reason and try and bring back the Gronk and Hernandez days. Like, I think they're awful. I think they have one of the better coaches, one of the best coaches in the league and one of the worst GMs in the league. And they're the same guy. Like, (laughs) You know, I I think I think it's run its course. Its course, but Robert Kraft owes the the billions of dollars that the Patriots are worth all to Bill Belichick. So what's he going to do? Fire him? Like, you know, I, I I think they need a change, and I think they'll be a far away fourth place in the division. Yeah, no, I mean, I I would say I'm. I mean, I'm am pretty... I being biased to the Bills? I mean, I don't know. Do you think the Rodgers thing's just gonna slide well, no, in and no, be no. all happy? I, like, I I was just about to say I I'm pretty on board with your assessment. I I think until proven otherwise, the the Bills are the team to beat. Uh, I mean, they're they're just stacked. Um, and and Josh Allen is is like a transcendent talent that can put the team on his back in a way that Rodgers used to, but he is no longer capable of. Um, so I, I picked the Bills, and, and, and a big part of that also is the coaching staff. Really veteran coaching staff who who's proven consistency um, over time. They've proven that they can win big games. Uh, the Jets, yeah, super talented roster. I don't trust that coaching staff for shit they haven't done anything and um and especially you you get uh a his like historic level prima donna and aaron Rodgers in there uh and, and like the expectation is like all right well you're taking us to the promised land now what happens when things start to go wrong um well and that's what i wonder like okay what if they start one and two you know what if they, you know, don't start out great? Like Rogers going to be like, screw this. Yeah, I, I mean, I see. It, I kind of agree with you that if Tua stays healthy, I think Miami ends up second. Um, but if not challenging for first, I mean, they. Yeah, dude, I mean, they, they challenged like, I, until I the last, you know, handful of games when they spiraled. Like, yeah, I I don't think there's a better. Um, wide receiver cornerback combo in the league 
than the Dolphins have. I mean, you got Tyree Kill and and Jalen Weddle, and then you got Jalen Ramsey and uh, Xavier Howard or Xavier Howard. Um, like, dude, that is in a passing league. The Dolphins are at the top in terms of skill positions there. Um, and, and I, and I think that year for the coaching staff to grow is, uh, really important. Um, Dolphins could be a great team, but <laughs> at the same time, I don't think Tua is staying healthy for a full season. I yeah. frankly, I think the dude should have retired. If, Mike if he... McDaniel like worries me like in a good way for the Dolphins in a bad way for the bills. Like that was his first year. And like, he, he kind of figured a lot of things out. Like. You know, I'm I'm a little nervous to have him in the in the division. You know, yeah. I, was, I I think he can. I think he's a real interesting mind and mm-hmm. can get the best out of players. Like, no, I mean he he definitely seems like he he could potentially be, you know, the best off the Shanahan tree. Um, right. So yeah, man, if two is healthy all year, I would pick the Dolphins. I mean, second. it's a big if, right? Like, but that that's the thing. I don't think it's going to happen. So I think the think Jets who their probably quarterback is now. Didn't they get I, I don't somebody? even know, man. They should make a better investment in backup quarterback. Well, because I think I don't think it's Bridgewater anymore. I think he moved on. Um, I mean, I think they moved on. <laughs> I, do, I mean, Bridgewater's not a bad backup. But... They ended up going with freaking Skylar Thompson or whatever for their yeah. playoff game. Well, well no, no, that, that was Bridgewater was hurt. I, I know. Oh yeah, yeah, they brought in Mike White. That's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I do think the Jets probably finish second just because Tua won't stay healthy. Um, I I don't think it's going to be quite as rosy in New York as as a lot of people paint it to be. I think there's going to be growing pains. I think there's going to be drama. Uh, and and Sauce Gardner is the He's the fucking real deal. He's one of the best rookies I've seen in a long time. Garrett Wilson, yeah, he was good. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year. He wasn't no fucking Jamar Chase. Like, yeah. someone has to win Offensive Rookie of the Year every year. He did well, it. And I, I mean, I think Brees Hall would have won it if he didn't tear his ACL. And then, yeah, Brees Hall's great, but, you know, historically, it takes two seasons to come back at mm-hmm. full strength from an ACL. Uh, and their offensive line has issues. Um, I just if if Rogers doesn't trust, you know, s- some of those receivers, like, well, dude, the, the he's fact, just not gonna throw it to him. He's like, well, yeah, no, the fact that like, Allen was you mad about Sydney Brown. Signs yeah, to, I'm mad to about a Sydney big Brown. contract before all this. It it's just Rogers trust this. This is like early onset Alzheimer's dementia shit. Like, like just the the level of paranoia about like I can only trust these guys. Like I I'm not gonna sacrifice, you know my my TD interception ratio. Like it, it's it's insane. Like no other quarterback in history has behaved like this. Yeah, I mean you saw it hurt freaking Watson at the beginning of the season. Drop that open bomb and. <laughs> Freaking was nowhere to be seen for like five weeks. All because Rogers wanted to throw to Romeo Dobbs. Yeah, so I um I, I think the most interesting aspect of the division is the Patriots because as you said, you know, their roster is not super talented, but obviously having Belichick like he He's just, he's so great that he's going to find weaknesses to exploit in every team he faces. And the style of football they play helps to minimize their lack of talent. Um, you know, going run heavy and, and keeping the, the score low. Right. Just imagine they had some talent. Yeah. Well, Well, I'm just, I'm wondering like, you know, how lucky can they get? Um, because teams like that, you look at the Steelers with Mike Tomlin and and a lot of mediocre teams in recent years, and he just doesn't have losing seasons because the brand of football he plays, they're going to compete in every game even if they don't have the talent. And, and that's how the Patriots are built right now. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So it just I, I wouldn't count them out, but yeah, the most likely they finish fourth in the division. What do you think your division's gonna be? Yours seems feels a little wide open with Rogers being gone. Well, dude, Minnesota, um the number of one score games they won last year was just way out of whack. I think they're gonna regress hard and they'll be lucky to win 11 games. Um, I think Chicago's still got a lot of building to do. Um, Detroit, like, they've got all the pieces where it's there for the taking, but they're also Detroit. I was just saying, then they have this draft. <laughs> um, do, like, everyone's writing Green Bay off, like, oh, shit, man, like, this is a transitional year. Uh, I mean, you did lose Al Lazard, so yeah. <laughs> pack it in for five wins. Um, it, it literally all depends on Jordan Love. Like, it, if he comes out and can play, you know, d just at a like middle of the league quarterback level, I honestly think Green Bay is a playoff team. Um, if he fucking stinks, then we know we got to get a new quarterback. Uh, but I, do you think I Minnesota's going to win the division? I think they're regressing hard, man. I, I would take Detroit over Minnesota. Lions are taking that and hooker. Like you already know they are, or you're just guessing? No, I, I, I know they are. It's a good pick. Oh, shit. It's a good pick. Have him sit for a year under Goff. Goff's, I mean, had Super Bowl experience. Like, you can say whatever you want about the dude. Like, he's been there at least. I mean, I, it, as a Packers fan, I don't hate this though. Cause, like, yes, like, this is a good developmental pick for them that, that, you know, kind of gives a direction going forward. But at the same time, like, Hennon Hooker does not scare me as, like, I don't think he's ever going to be a top five quarterback. Like, he might be their new Jared Goff. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's getting picked at the beginning of the third round. Like, you know, I don't, you know, if he's top 10 ever, you know, that that'll be a win at this point. Like, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, for the Lions, it makes sense. It's not a bad move. Um, Like, he, he could very well be a long term starting quarterback in the league. I just don't think he will be an elite quarterback. Um, So, you know, like, whatever. I'm, I'm okay with it. And, 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 you know, the Lions are probably okay with that too. You know, they're probably looking at it like we don't want to build a team that relies on the quarterback. So you really think the Lions could win the division over Minnesota? Me? Dude, Minnesota no. was something Cody. like, I think they were like eight and one in one score of games. I um, know, but I mean, I think I would agree with Cody. I think Detroit's got a pretty good chance to finish the first overall yeah. in the division. I just think you got Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Hawkinson. You got, right. well, you right, got so Delvin let, Cook for now. No, let, let me break it down. Okay, so Delvin Cook, um, historically super injured running back. Uh, he was relatively healthy last year, but he's another year older. Do you think he stays healthy a whole year? I don't. Uh, Kirk Cousins is Kirk Cousins. Uh, he's mm -hmm. He'll put up some nice stats uh, in a clutch game. I wouldn't bet anything on him. Justin Jefferson, yeah, he's a baller. Top three receiver in the league. Um, I won't even say he re regresses. Like I, He's he's awesome. Um, best part of that team. Uh, but around yeah they got Hawkinson now so that that is a good piece that I think will continue to grow Addison he's probably going to be a package player his first year I, I don't think he's going to be a reliable number two I mean he can't be any worse than the corpse of Adam Thielen like <laughs> like Thielen was like a shell of himself last year yeah um no, I, I, just, I mean, the, the primary problem with that team is their defense was atrocious. And I so they brought in Brian Flores, who I do think is a good coach, but he runs a super aggressive scheme.
that relies on uh, a lot of talent at cornerback, which is the Vikings' weakest position. Yeah. I I don't know, man. I just I don't I I trust Detroit more because they're building through the trenches. And also, like Minnesota, some of their top players. You look at a guy like uh, Danielle Hunter, um, you know, the defensive end. He's like, can you rely on him? He was like out of the league for a year, and and Zadarius Smith was one of their best defenders last year. But he's like, he was super streaky. He would have dominant games and then games where he disappeared. Plus, he's got back issues. Is Hendricks um, still there? No, they released Kendricks. Couldn't afford him. Who does um, he play for now? I don't know if anyone signed him yet, to be honest. That's a good question. Dude, he, he was a fucking baller. Chargers. For years. Play, plays for the Chargers. Ooh, that's, the Chargers that's nice should thing. have the best defense in the league. Like, What is wrong with them? When Chargers have some sort of curse, man. Right? Like... You got Herbert, you got all those offensive weapons, Eckler, you know, Williams, you got uh, Palmer, you got Allen, <laughs> like, you look at their defense, you got Mack, you got Bosa, you got, you know, J.C. Jackson, you got, um, who's on? Who's their other corner that's really good? Asante Samuel Jr. Yes. Like, um, they got uh, Derwin James. Like, Dude, th- this has been the story the of the Chargers my out. entire life. They've always been stacked with talent and do nothing with it. Um, I will say this with, by the way, with the Lions drafting Hooker, we're just gonna have to start drafting for scrambling quarterbacks. You guys know how much I love fucking scrambling quarterbacks. I gotta deal with Fields and Hooker now. Yeah, well, dude, I mean, that that might have been a big reason for the Quay Walker pick last year. A guy who can run and chase those scramblers. If there's one thing that I hate about the evolution of football is that quarterbacks are basically running backs now. And, like, your defense can just do their jobs and play football and shut the, all the skill position players down. And it doesn't matter how good they do it. The quarterback can just scramble up the middle for 30 yards. Summerfields. I used to live near there. If I was an NFL owner at the owner's meeting, I would say quarterbacks are only allowed to scramble like twice a game. That's it. Can't do it more than that. Yeah. I'm rule. a proposed rule chain. Like <laughs> legit, like it's it's like it's not a moral thing to do, really. But if I were an NFL coach trying to win football games. I would have a designated hitter on my roster who is like a second string guy that I'm like, all right, you go in there and fucking wreck that quarterback if he tries to run. And and like, the thing is, like, if it was that easy, they would already have this position. Well, they would think so, man. They would, uh, like, the NFL would just like, Give out like year long suspensions for the like the, the Saints got in trouble for that for like head hunting or whatever. Yeah, Greg Williams. Well, that, yeah. that was because there was a fucking financial incentive by Greg Williams. That was some messed up shit right there. Whatever, man. <laughs> the same thing. It's not the same thing, but yeah, no, it it's it's tough, man. It's it's the. The game is so tilted in the offense's favor now. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, that, that's really what it is. I'm, I mean, I, I think back to that uh, the wild card, or sorry, the divisional game between Buffalo and Kansas City, and, and you got what, 13 seconds left or whatever. And Mahomes, they scored like 28 points after the two minute warning in the fourth quarter or something crazy. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like when a quarterback can take off running for 40 yards. And it happened every critical game in the two-minute warning. You know an elite quarterback is going to take off running. It's just like built into the script now. Mm -hmm. 
so it's like the only thing you can do is rely on turnovers, really. Wow. The Raiders got that pick in quick. I think the Raiders were probably mad that Detroit took Hooker. Cody, we're coming up in, uh, what, seven more picks or something like that? You guys are still going to get Washington this late. Uh, yeah, I need something to make me happy. If you might. Fucking. What about Hyatt in the third round? I mean, you would probably be okay with him now, right? Yeah, sure. Why the hell not? I've already got a couple disappointing picks. So. <laughs> my my day two crush is still still on the board. I Who's can't that? say it's. I can't really say his name, but I could add a add a Tomiwa, oh, add a dude from, uh, Northwestern. Yeah, I liked him a lot. He's still on the board. Yeah, I mean, we do need more defensive line help, but I just he. I keep coming back to like you make this bet on Jordan Love, you got to give him a chance and surround him with talent. Like there, we have fucking eight first round picks on our defense now. We'll, we'll trade a day three pick for DeAndre well, Hopkins then. I mean, you just did a you got a wide receiver, you got a receiving tight end. All right, yeah. so we got a receiving tight end and we got a body. Um, I'm still looking for some more. <laughs> You yeah, need I, a running I, back. I, That's what you need. I Another running that, back. I hope that Jaden sure. Reed proves me wrong. I hope he turns into, you know, the next second round Pro Bowl receiver for the Packers. We do need a running back, Ian. I just I wouldn't take him this early. Um, but Char- I I could Char- definitely Benet see. He's still on the board. No, he's what? gone. He went oh, to Seattle. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. Isn't that? Yeah, because he went with Kenneth Walker. We looked up Rashad Penny to see where he went. And then we looked up Miles Sanders. Yeah, running back is a sneaky need, though, because uh, Aaron Jones getting up there in years, and he has a high uh, cap hit next year. Like, he would have been cut this year if he didn't take a pay cut, took a five mil pay cut. Um. And then AJ Dillon is going to be free agent, and like, do you do you give a a second contract to a running back who's been a backup his entire career, but also like probably gets enough money? Like another team sees him as a starter. Like I I don't know that I I really like AJ Dillon to be honest, but I don't know that we resign him. Because I feel like another team might pay more. Saints just picked a running back, so Kendra Miller. He's he, he's like a tank, like two fifteen. Mm. It's fucking wild how bad the NFC South is. Yeah, I mean, literally anyone could win it. I mean, it happened last year with Tom Brady in the division. The freaking Panthers were in it the last two weeks. The Panthers still could have won. Dude, it, it's, it saddens me that Tom Brady, the, the fucking, like, legit, the GOAT, like, not throwing around that phrase like everyone does. Like, Tom Brady is the GOAT that his final season is this middling just like clawing to the playoffs and then get your ass beat in the first round. He should have just retired the year before. They almost had a historic comeback against the Rams. Like that that should have been enough for his legacy and he could have kept his family together. No, but instead, that's, that was the problem. He retired for a month or whatever and his wife's like i don't want to do this you're home i we we got to get a divorce i'm telling you that's what happened and he's like all right well, i'll go back to football like, she's like i don't want you home uh, what's that syracuse corner coming off the board for the cardinals here mm-hmm Garrett Williams. What are you on Twitter? Why are you so? 
Or heads. Nah, I don't know. My stream's just ahead, I guess, tonight. All right. I'll have to slow what down then, I guess. What stream are you on? I'm still I know. On I'm on a commercial. <laughs> I'm on ESPN. You got to be on ESPN, too. ESPN's <laughs> got the basketball game. But that's wow. what I'm on. Is you ESPN on the too. Ocho right now? <laughs> I don't, you, it you get these picks in Spanish? Like, I don't, I'm what, like on the ESPN on. app, and it it still doesn't have the pick in. Oh, shit. The Texans took Tank Dell? And the... Oh, you missed that? Yeah. Wow, that seems like a bad pick. Yeah, it seems like a huge reach. Well, and especially it's like they don't have really big receivers on their roster. Like John Mechie was their second round pick last year, and and you know, and uh, unfortunately he he had health issues, had to take the year off. Hopefully he's he's coming back strong. Um, but even if he does come back, not a big guy. Um. I know. Well, that's who you have CJ Shroud to throw to. Like, you're like, here, throw to this 5'8", dude. Don't worry, we have Robert Woods. He's 32 years old and couldn't hang on in Tennessee last year. Like, yeah, I, 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 not exactly I, surrounding their young quarterback with talent, considering they traded up to give away the picks next year. Yeah, I, I cannot understand why any NFL GM would ever take a day one or day two chance on like an outlier player. Like, yeah, dude, maybe, you know, 5% of people are going to turn into Deshaun Jackson or whatever, but 95% of them aren't like, why the fuck are you burning picks on someone who's five, seven, it's wild. It, it is just insane that someone being paid millions of dollars to evaluate this shit year round would take a risk like that. Also, this Arizona Cardinals fan is a sexual <laughs> predator. I don't know if you spotted that guy, Ian, but I got nothing yet it just came back from commercials oh all right well you'll see you'll know him when you see him so far the packers have drafted two bears fans drafted yeah. bears fans uh lucas von ness uh grew up oh. a bears fan and uh jane reed grew up a bears fan as well maybe they're hoping for some self-hatred as motivation i've always like wondered that like cody like you're a diehard Packer fan. If you were good enough playing the NFL and you got drafted by the Bears, like, how would you feel? Like, you'd be pumped I that you're in the great. NFL. great. They're paying my paycheck. Yeah, yeah my, my guy, if I'm making millions of dollars, I'll I'll set my personal feelings aside. <laughs> right. I'm asking for a goddamn trade. I'll make I'll make millions of dollars elsewhere. Oh, my God. I, I know Get the damn team. Get out of here. <laughs> Dude, I, mean, I, I guess it, it, it all depends. You're gonna draft it, you're gonna go up there and Dude, you, it depends. Are you it telling me CJ how Stroud good you are? Get, Dude, yeah, if, you if you're a fucking, Stroud if you're an Eli this? Manning, yeah, then yeah, you can demand it. You can be like, I'm a Manning. I'm not playing for your shitty San Diego team. Yeah, it sounds so <laughs> crazy. Oh, I'd rather be in New York than San Diego. <laughs> 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 Ted who? Ted no one. Yeah, what? Is, uh, I I mean, I he went on to win two Super Bowls, yeah. so whatever. Yeah. But like, you do you go to San Diego? You get to play with Ladanian Tomlinson and like, and being why? seventy and sunny all year. <laughs> like, this receiver. Did, did you spot the child predator? No, I never saw anybody. All right, well, you got to sharpen your eye. Giants take Jalen Hyatt. Mm, he was getting close to us, too. He was. He was. We're um, up in four more picks. Yeah. Cedric Tillman's still out there, I think, though, right? Yeah, I can't he believe. Is. I thought he Tillman is. would go before him. So Dude, Josh I mean, Jones. I'm wondering, though, because you look at our wide receiver room. We got Watson, Dobbs, 
uh, Samari Tor, who was like, he was a seventh round pick last year, but it was a really deep draft. So maybe he's more like a fourth. Um, and now we, we take Reed in the second. Uh, so like, are you really, are you going to burn a, a third on someone who you project to be your fifth receiver? I mean, I no, know. you wouldn't, but I, I don't know. I'd have to think if these third round picks would not end up being your fifth receiver, but. Well, also like I, I do think we still try to sign a veteran at, at cut downs. Um, like this wide receiver room is, right now, it might be the youngest in the league. Uh, I, I really think they're going to try to get a vet in there. Yeah, Sammy Watkins, bring him back. Oh my god! <laughs> Dude, Sammy Watkins was a disaster. I can't believe signing. he's still kicking around. It's... Yeah, I can't believe he's still under thirty years old. No, he's not. Dude, I think he was like twenty nine. He looks like he's forty seven running no, out there. No, he's 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 twenty nine. He turns thirty in June. Oh, god. oh, like he's basically just about thirty, but technically That's he's still twenty nine. Dude, he's get yeah, he's he has the wear and tear of like a forty five year old. But dude, what wow. What a disappointing pick. Like the promise he showed in his first two years with the Bills. It's like, a, yeah, all right. He had a foot injury that screwed him over. He was done after that. Well, he uh still I mean, considering the other receivers that went after him too. Cedric Tillman. Back to back, right, Tennessee receivers. Go. Spoke too soon. Gilman to the Browns. What do you guys think about the Browns? You think Deshaun Watson just had a year of rust and he's going to go back to elite? Or do you think that the Browns signed the worst contract in history? Um. I think he'll. I don't. I don't know that he'll go back to what he was. Yeah, I think considering the think other he'll be better talent, than last year. Like considering the other talent in the league now at quarterback, I think he's probably just going to be like a like average starter. Dude, I mean, he's like, still dude. He's still young. I know. Like it's not. It's not like age so, is diminishing yeah. him. So is so is Cam Newton though. Cam Newton's not young. Yeah, Cam Newton's pretty young. I bet you he's like 33, 34. Yeah, okay, maybe. I forget about that the Browns acquired Elijah Moore. They got Donovan Peoples Jones. They got Amari Cooper. Like, like, man, I like Donovan Peoples Jones. Deep, deep receiving. Yeah. I mean, th that, that might have just been their fourth receiver. <laughs> I mean, I know Amari Cooper's getting up there. He's 28, but... Oh, they have like four. Mark Cooper four feels legit, a lot older than twenty-eight. Yeah, four legit receivers in Cooper, Moore, Peoples Jones, and now Cedric Tillman. Anthony Schwartz was what a third-round pick not that long ago. Yeah, he's a burner too. Um, they got Marquise Goodwin, who's thirty-two. That's kind yeah, of crazy. He might not even make the team. Yeah, I mean, he won't. David Bell, there's no way he's going to make the team now. Like, dude, wasn't Bell a third-round pick last year? Was it last year? It's two years. He's been in the league two years. Okay. Um. Yeah. Like, man, they are like crazy deep in receivers. Um. David Bell was drafted last year in the third round. That's crazy. So he's probably still gonna be on the team. He's still on that rookie deal. I mean, unless how many receivers are you gonna keep? Yeah, I don't. It's interesting that they went receiver. <laughs> Dude, I mean, when really when you look at that roster, their offense is pretty stacked at skill positions. Uh, their defense, Miles Garrett is arguably the best pass rusher in the league, and and they've got an elite secondary. Like, there's a ton of talent. 
on that Browns roster. Yeah. And somehow Deshaun Watson sucked so much ass last year that they missed the playoffs. Like, they might just be hoping, like, hey, you were distracted. Um, we're going to get you a personal masseuse to get your head right. And, uh, and like, they gonna... got two Pro Bowl guards. Like, how was this team not good? Denzel Ward, Greg Newsom, like, man. It's kind of crazy. Browns might be good this year. I mean, it's it's, it's possible. It really all depends on Watson. He's got to come back. He's he's got to be better than he was last year. Dude, I mean, he was like he historically he bad. I tell you this much: he underperforms again. That entire coaching staff gets fired. I I know Stefanski won Rookie Coach of the Year. But they're not going two years uh, with underperforming Watson shouldn't, with that contract. Shouldn't be the coaching staff's fault. The GM fucked up. Yeah, I'm just saying it like it is, man. They paid the money. Yeah. There's no getting out of it now. I know. It's just Browns doing Brown stuff. Man, Anna Bawar is still there. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. He's probably going to go to the Falcons right here or something, though. Or he's yeah, probably dude, got... honestly, if, if he falls to us, I, I would not mind that pick he's, at all. He's got... I was almost thinking about like possibly taking him with our second second round pick because I didn't think he would be here in the third. If not, he's got Patriots right now, too, though. He's a Patriot, looking like a Patriot player. Well, they already took Keon White, though. All right, well, it's survives on and Zach Harrison. Okay. So, I, I'm going to – I keep butchering his name, whatever, like the, the double-A guy. But he <laughs> – Energizer <laughs> bunny. Yeah. He reminds me a lot of uh, Osa Odigizua from last year's draft, which I really liked and wish wanted him in like the third round. And I believe he went to Dallas. Dallas, yeah, you're right. He went to Dallas and he's a starter now. He's their starting defensive tackle now. So Patriots are on the clock, and the Rams, and then us, and unless we traded, and I can't see it yet. Oh, wow. Patriots got that pick right in already. They ran up to that podium. Good. It, I mean, for, first two picks for them defense, um, which, honestly, they look like pretty good picks, but you got to think maybe they try to go – Offense here to get some balance. God knows they could receiver. use some offensive help. Cedric Tillman, maybe? He already went. Good. Yeah, oh, he, he did. went already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Browns, Browns. Oh. Yeah. Linebacker from Sacramento State. Linebacker. Uh, I had him listed as a safety, but. Okay. I mean, those can be interchangeable, but. They've already got like four safeties, hybrids, like they've already got a million positionless players. Yeah, well, yeah, a couple Kyle Duggar, now. like I feel like you already got this dude. And he's at Sacramento State. Isn't that where James Jones played? Or was it San Jose State? Uh, well, I mean, we could use. I mean, they already have Duggar. We could like use. You already have this help. dude. Yeah, well, Rams just, ran up there to get this pick. <laughs> just in case he gets hurt or something. Wow.
Aaron Young, that's a good trade. All right, he's on the board, Green Bay. Fucking take him. So is Darnell Washington. I was to say, Darnell Washington's still there. Make Cody happy. Get the Please. guy Cody wanted. Get the guy Cody wanted at 42 at 78. Dude, right. our, our tight end room is so bad, we need to completely rebuild it. Let's get predictive. Not who you want. Let's get predictive. Who you think? I, I think it's got to be offense. You have to keep building around love. I think they um, take. I think they take safety J or Brown. Oh that's, yeah, shit. We do desperately need a safety. That's not who I want. Take Josh Downs, five nine, one seventy. Josh Downs. I took Josh. I am. I am scout that guy because I was like, he ain't gonna. Green Bay ain't gonna look at no guy. I, I don't think it's gonna be a safety because there there have been so so little movement on safety in this draft. I think we probably think we can get one in the fourth. We have ten picks remaining. Jesus. I think we go offense here. I love you, Leroy, but just announce the fucking pick. Okay. Okay. Hold I can do. I, I, I was actually. It. I was about to suggest, if not Darnell Washington, Tucker Craft. Tucker Craft. My I, God, I you guys it. did double up a tight end. I can dig it, man. You took like two like receiving tight ends. I, I feel like Tucker Craft has more blocking chops than Musgrave. The Jackrabbits. All right, man. Well, that's already lining up just like in the slot. That that's the tight end room remade right there. Yeah. Yeah, second and a third rounder invested in tight ends. So and plus Degora was a third rounder. That's a lot of draft capital in the tight end. They better start performing. Well. Yeah. So now that they actually doubled up in tight end, how do you guys feel? Good? I can't believe Darnell Washington is just fucking falling. Well, I mean, it's got to be that the league must see him as, despite his athleticism, they must see him as just only a blocker. Yeah. Which, if you're a one-trick pony as a blocker, you ain't getting picked in the first three rounds. Yeah, I mean, you might Which, as well be a yeah. shitty tackle. I mean, I I, I felt like he Just had enough. to grow as a receiver the class. I I really thought Darnell Washington would be more intriguing, but it looks like the league sees him as a just a blocking guy. So, I mean, if you're going off RAS scores and stuff, I mean, I'm not saying Green Bay is, but Luke Musgrave was the second highest. What's What's more surprising is Darnell Washington was the third third highest with a nine point eight five RAS. Uh, Tucker Craft was fifth with a nine point five eight. Hmm. What did you say, Jaden Reed was? Um, not amazing. I don't think. Uh, six point six one. That's in the Brian Branch range. Yeah. Steelers are trading to who? Don't cut Panthers. Panthers. You think the Panthers go offense again? I'm wondering if they're thinking of Washington. God, I they got who their tight end Ian is. Thomas. Ian Thomas, and they have somebody else. 
They could probably use Keely Ringo. Wouldn't surprise me if we see a fourth round run on cornerbacks. Seems like there's a, a lot of uh, promising guys there, but like still grouped in the same tier. Cody, you're going to like this. So I'll read you just the first draft bio I have on Tucker Craft. It takes an uncommon talent to declare with eligibility remaining at the FCS level. Tucker Craft spent the 2021-2022 season proving that's just what he is, though. He's a 6'5", 254-pound tight end who logged 92 catches for 1,121 yards and nine touchdowns over his final 24 games, putting him on the fast track to early round status. He's not quite as expansive a route runner as the prospects who are above him on this list, but he brings plenty of appeal with his athleticism, play strength after the catch, and blocking ability on the ground, particularly as a run after the catch threat. Kraft thrives, and he can be a bully in both phases with his tenacious playmaking mentality. Hmm. Okay. There's no way the Panthers traded up for a tight end. Have Ian Thomas, Tommy Tremble, and Hayden Hurst. Could use more receivers. Yeah. I mean, I just I don't think they go defense. Like defense is what they rode to when they were chasing the playoffs. Like their defense is pretty solid. They just got a bunch of like okay wide receivers. I feel like you're just adding another okay wide receiver to the mix in the third round. Yeah. Like DJ DJ Shark and Adam Thielen, you know, whatever you Why think. Why would anyone sign called. Adam Thielen at this point in his career? Because you're the Panthers trying to fill out your roster. Who knows? If they do a receiver here, you might not even make it out of camp. <laughs> That'll be somebody you guys will end up with. <laughs> How old is Stefan Diggs? 28. 28, I think. 28? Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll get it for you. I mean, I definitely feel like there's some pressure on the Bills that, like, 29. The, the window, not like, oh, the window's closing forever, but, like, the current window might be closing within the next couple years, and then you're going to have to do a, a reload before you can come back again. Yeah, I mean, not this year, but probably next year you're going to push a little bit more of the panic button on wide receiver. Gabe Davis's rookie deals up, and you know, unless he has some sort of breakout year, they're not going to re-sign him to whatever contract he'll get, you know, $20 million a year or something. And... Uh, Diggs will be 30, you know, next year. You know, Dude, Gabe it, Davis seems season. like a guy who has all the tools that, like, he could become a number one. Yeah, but he's just... Just like he took a step backward last year, it seems. So he, the expectations were, were him to take this gigantic leap. He, numbers-wise, was basically the same receiver as he was the year before. Like, he was basically the same guy. Just the expectation was that he yeah. was going to be this, you know. Dude, I mean, after that four-touchdown playoff game, right. I think a lot of people got excited. Yeah. You know, so, and it was the last thing anyone saw, so, you know. Um, you know, I think somebody's going to overpay him. I think he's going to be Zay Jones. I think he's going to be, you know, I don't think it'll be Christian Kirk, but... You know, I, think somebody's gonna I, pay I give him more credit than that. Like he, he, he has unteachable speed that that neither uh, Jones or Kirk have. Yeah. Like I, I think Davis, like he, he's got all the physical traits you look for. Yeah, I think you like it more than than I do, and maybe it's just because I see him all the time. <laughs> he's got questionable hands, which is tough. Yeah. Yeah, which is, is the really tough part because, you know, as a receiver, it's really important to catch the ball. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that sounds like MBS. The Packers yeah. felt comfortable letting go to 
to KC and uh, seems justified in that decision. You know, he didn't really light KC up, and it's not like there was a clear number one above him. Right. You know, that's why there was even this year, if there was someone there, a big push to get a real number two that could develop into a number one. You know, I mean, shoot, for a fourth-round pick, Gabe Davis has, you know, certainly got his return back as far as draft capital. Um, you know, there's no there's no doubt that it wasn't a really good pick, but, you know, I think, I think I'd rather have somebody a little bit more reliable. Did I miss the last pick? DJ Johnson, linebacker. Um, which, which they were just showing. He he's a fucking big boy, man. He's a two hundred sixty pound linebacker. Holy cow! Yeah. The Devin McCourty. Jason McCourty. Sorry. Dude, I, I honestly think that if CJ Stroud, or sorry, rather, if Bryce Young can get up to speed quickly, and I read that he, he scored like a 98 out of 100 on the S2, which is the Wonderlick replacement, and it's actually more relevant to football, whereas the, the Wonderlick was more of a general intelligence test. The S2 is more about processing speed and shit like that. If if Bryce Young can get up to speed quickly, I really think Carolina could compete in that division, man. They pushed hard last year for, for the division crown, and it, the division is worse this year than it was last year. Yeah, I mean, you know, it can be said for literally any of the teams in that division. If their quarterback can figure it out, they could win it. I mean, shoot, Desmond Ritter figures it out, and it's just okay. Like, they just drafted Bijan. They got Kyle Pitts. They got Drake London. Like, you know, the, if uh, Jimmy G can figure it out in uh, New Orleans. Derek Carr. Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, wait, yeah. other way around. Yeah. Well, no, I, um, I mean, I definitely, I think at this point, New Orleans has to be the favorite, um, God, just with Derek Carr being a proven vet. But yeah, if if any of those young guys takes an unexpected leap, they could easily take that division. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. What Tasha Spears? No, um, Cody or Ian too. So. Jordan Love's 24, A.J. Dillon's 24, Watson's 23, Dobbs is 23, Jane Reed's 23, Musgrave's 22, and Tucker Craft's 22. We got pretty young offense. Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and, dude, fucking Bakhtiari, like like we were talking about earlier, he's not going to be around next year. Yeah. Um, like, it's really – We might have the, the youngest offense. Total youth movement, movie. man. Yeah, we Listen, might if, if Jordan Love, like, is the real deal, like, you guys just – have another, you know, seven to ten years where you guys are in the playoffs every year. Like, you guys don't know what it's like to hurt. I'd almost rather Jordan Love sucked. Don't, no, don't, Come here. don't do. Why would you wish that on someone? I need somebody to feel the pain. I'm just like you guys. I, 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 I to Rogers. Like I've yep. literally never known it. My entire yeah. life has been Favre and Rogers. You want me to just mute Ian right now, so he's just done talking for a while. <laughs> Peach stop. Yeah, yeah, Diaby. Yeah, yeah, Diaby. Huh. This is. Let's go, yeah, yeah. Dude, they should uh they should get ha ha to coach up yeah yeah. <laughs> uh ha ha was in I think he does have a role with Green Bay. Like I don't know if he's on the coaching staff right, but he does I, I heard that he got into coaching. I I thought it was on Alabama though. 
Be. Uh-huh. Okay, he is current. He's currently the director of player development for Alabama. Yeah, all right, you're right. Sounds like a made-up position. You How many guys do they have that Ooh, are the directors? Trade in a little while. Seahawks trade pick to the Broncos. Broncos coming up to get darn all right. They already. They already gave up on Greg Dulcich. I I like Dulcich, man. I I thought he showed quite a bit as a rookie receiver that will continue to grow. Like like if if Musgrave performed similar similarly to Dulcich, I'd probably be happy. Got to start looking at what the Bills might uh, what might actually be there. Musgrave's going to wear number 88 for us. What do you think it takes for the Broncos to actually compete in that division? Um, Russell Wilson to get back to the form he was in Seattle? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they got enough skill even positions. At, like, even at that form. I, I don't think he competes with Mahomes and Her, Herbert. Like I mean, the Chargers are basically like the Lions of the AFC West. Like I think, I mean, probably not figure out, out a way to screw it up at this point. The Raiders probably aren't going to be very good. Yeah, probably not taking over Mahomes, but I think they could usurp uh, Chargers, get in as a wild card. The, I I feel bad for Justin Herbert. Because like I feel like he's just a legit baller, who he'll probably he'll probably be a fucking Dan Marino, spend his entire career with the Chargers, just constantly let down by the team around him. I, I still know. like the like there they were draft have... there were draft rumors back in 2020 that uh, that the Packers considered trading Rodgers to the Chargers. So that they could go take Herbert. Can you imagine if that happened, man? You'd be fucking sitting pretty right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like quarterbacks don't have the the understanding and the ability to stick with a team the way Dan Marino did with Miami. (laughs) Like, I feel like Herbert would be like, "I'm out of here." Like. You know, today's day and age, they don't just stick with a team that doesn't yeah, give them a shot at I a mean, Super Bowl. You you say that though, but how many quarterbacks have actually found a way to force themselves out of their team? Like Kirk Cousins, he did the you know he was patient and went through the two franchise years, and 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 he got out. Other than that. You know, Lamar tried it and, you know, ended up just taking the money from Baltimore. Um, Deshaun Watson got traded away, but that wasn't, like, from his own doing. That was because Houston was like, all right, you're a fucking sexual scandal. We need to get rid of you now. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Easier said than done. Riley Moss. Okay. Safety. When what pick does Buffalo have in the third? Ninety one. So they're about like seven or eight picks away. Oh shit. And what you're telling me is I need to plug my laptop in because I'm losing <laughs> charge. <laughs> Bill should pick Darnell Washington. Uh, yeah, yeah, you guys should get your. Uh, yeah, dude, got you, Knox, you got Knox and Kincaid. Him, and Kincaid. You can go with a jumbo package on every play and just run Josh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Bring in an extra lineman, too. 
Why the hell not? I mean, I'm looking at A.T. Perry. He's got, you know, the size. You know, I don't know if he's a third rounder. Running back. That's a good one. They need a freaking running back. I would like that dude that you were saying, um, Andrew. Which one? That defensive end. Oh, yeah. Uh, double A. Yeah. I. I am amazed that he's fallen this. I mean, even even ESPN had him on the top five best available. Like ten picks into the second round, he was he was already sitting there. So I don't know. Either he wouldn't come to his birthday party too, or he's got Chris Hansen on speed dial. I don't know. I mean, Trenton Simpson's still there. Yeah, he's he's the guy you want in the second round too. Yeah, I mean. He's the guy that I said is, you know, a lot like uh, a lot like Matt Milano. But well, do you take Keely Ringo, push him to safety, have the heir apparent to Poirier and Hyde? Tell me, Hamlin's not an heir apparent. Um, yeah, you know, he could be. I don't know. I I thought he looks pretty good last year. In spot starts, he was all right. I he you know, was responsible I, for giving up a lot of touchdowns, though. I think he might be a good third safety special teams guy. Yeah, you know, and a pinch has to start. You know. Um, no, Henley linebacker, Washington. All right. I mean, but there's still some. There's always some guys that drop. R Ringo's Ringo's still on the board, right? Yeah, that was what I was saying. That yep. you could the... push him to safety. Yeah, Ringo. I didn't think a, he would drop. That's now. crazy that some of these dudes that had this draft buzz of like first rounders are now mm -hmm. freaking still here late third round. Yeah, we're starting. We're starting to get into. The... Players where I haven't even scouted or looked up anything on them. Like, I wonder if you... Is, this is that Josh you... Downs still there? No. No, someone took Josh Downs? Yeah. I can't remember who took him, but... Okay. Hmm. Is Jordan Battle still out there? Safety? Yes. Jair Brown is ranked above him. Yeah. But... I know. I kind of like those dudes that play in the SEC. Like that always breaks a tie for me. <laughs> Like, I could see Trent and Simpson. I mean, Henry Toa Toa was starting a middle linebacker for Alabama. You'd think that'd be worth something. Mm -hmm. But. I think they're probably going to go linebacker. I didn't think Eli Ringo would drop that far. Ringo seems like a guy that Baltimore's like Ravens could target. They like their versatile corners. Oh, good God. I had a Chernobyl level spill. Chernobyl level? That's pretty fucking yep. bad. Yeah. 
It's fucking radioactive glow in my apartment right now. <laughs> well, the last time I talked to you, it was it was a good run, bud. Um, what what did I miss? Any, any interesting picks? No, we were just kind of brainstorming some guys that might be there for Buffalo still, like Ringo's um, on the board, Double A's on the board. I guess probably the only one was Devin Achain went to the Dolphins. Which, uh, running back, right? Yeah, he was, you know, projected to go a little bit, well, a lot a bit higher, but um, dude, I'm surprised though, for the given Dolphins. like McDaniel's coming from the 49ers and just like their history of just taking seventh rounders and undrafted guys and turning them into stars. Maybe he saw what Christian McCaffrey can do. Yeah. <laughs> Not that he's Christian McCaffrey, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like at almost every just like game-changing elite running back you look at in the league, it's like, oh, wow, look what he can do for our offense. But shit, he's healthy for two-thirds of the season. Like, yeah. it, it just... If you can find that running back who stays healthy the whole year, like Adrian Peterson, yeah, go for it. But that guy is so rare. Man, there's 102 picks. Or there's 39 picks in this round? Because of the comp, oh, comp yeah. picks? Comp picks, yeah. And I think I think San Francisco has got like a ton, an extra two or three third rounders. Yeah, they have three almost all in a row. They have 99, 101, and 102. Like, you can't sit there and pick all those, can you? Why the hell not? I don't know. I feel like might as well pick up a third rounder next year or something. Cody, we have nine picks tomorrow. That's crazy. I I bet you we trade up and try to get as many fourth and round picks as we can. I hope so. Oh, Ravens took Simpson. Yeah. He's he's off the board. There he goes. There goes that idea. People were talking about him as like a late first rounder, early second rounder. So pretty good value there. Very, very Ravens move. Yeah. All right, Bills, Henry Toa Toa. I don't know if he's worth it in the third, though. I mean, if you think he's a difference maker. I mean, is this where you take a a shot on a guy like Dewan Jones? Like, I, I just, I, as a rule of thumb, I would not take an offensive lineman that big. I just, I don't like the odds on it historically. I know you might as well take Darnell Washington. They're basically the same size. I thought DeWan Jones is like fucking 380 pounds or something. He is. But the, he's 6'7", or he's 6'8". Darnell Washington's 6'7", isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 6'7", 260. So he's an inch shorter and 100 pounds less. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the board right now, Andrew. There's still quite a few safety prospects. Mm-hmm. Um, I I could definitely see us aiming for a safety. I wouldn't mind. Day. I wouldn't mind seeing us get aggressive on like early on day three. Move up. Take, yeah, they can like just move like three of those picks or something like that. See if we can't find a trade or a dance partner in the. Go get your guy at safety because I don't want Rudy Ford and Dar- Darnell to be the two starters. But it also seems wild at this point that we'd be starting like a fourth round rounder as a starter at safety too. Like, but unless we go sign a sign a veteran guy. Also, did Adrian Amos even sign with anyone yet? Is he still no. out there as a free agent? He's still out there. Wow. Almost wonder if maybe you bring him back on a super ass cheap. <laughs> well, I just deal. Like we we let his void years hit 
Like if, if we had mm -hmm. any intention of keeping him, it would have made sense to negotiate a deal back in like February where like right now we're paying him money to be off the roster. Um, whereas if, you know, if, if we could have struck a deal earlier, then we wouldn't have had to pay those void years right now. Uh, so I did just do a quick Google search on Adrian Amos, and I, the first article that popped up was that the Packers are attempting to bring back Adrian huh. Amos, but I'm not sure how serious that is. I mean, if if it's like that minimum, sure, I'd be happy it, it, with that. It would have to be, probably. Like, he'd, he'd be a stopgap. He might not even keep his starting job the whole season if uh, – plays like he did last year but the Ravens yeah man I'm the, looking at the board good. there there's a lot of the safety prospects that I was looking at are are available and I I could really mm -hmm. see safety being our next target yeah at the moment our uh well so we did sign that guy Tarvarius Moore from San Francisco, but I'm pretty sure he's just like a special teamers guy. Yeah. But, I mean, he is listed at the starter the starting free safety at the moment. Ooh, uh, um, let's see. San Francisco Jair Brown safety. What did you pause it? They just announced the Jaguars pick. Well, ABC is showing me. All right. Well, now they just transitioned to Tank. Okay. Yeah. It's just interesting. Like I thought, like Roshan Johnson or. Yeah, I guess maybe just him. The other guys are already gone. Would go before him. Dude, I don't if if I'm the Jaguars and you got to compete in the AFC, I I probably would have gone corner. I think there's still some really good players at corner, and like yeah, you've got Tyson Campbell. Who else? I was like, just saying. I hope the Bills take Ringo and move him to safety. Have the heir apparent to Hyde Poyer take a year to transition. Yeah. Not a bad plan. I don't know. Like, I'm just looking at, you know, third round, who's there, like, best available. Like, you start to look, you know, where do you go, Henry Totoa, you know, the linebacker for Alabama, um, you know, to try and get that uh, Edmonds replacement. There's definitely some options, you know, only being two picks away. You know, I'd be fine with either one of those. If they really thought A.T. Perry, you know, had some size that they're missing. Yeah, I could see that one. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I've heard some good things about A.T. Perry. I really, I don't know. I mean, I think if you're going to, you know take a risk on a guy like Dewan Jones, like now's the time, but that feels like a an unnecessary risk with the guys that are on the board. Well what do what do you think about so like looking at Dewan Jones uh, I mean what you look is you hope, you know, you can get him on some sort of plan that, you know, he can drop, you know, twenty pounds. Well you well, know, so and then get into the three forty range. What I was going to ask is, um, what about a guy like, uh, what's his name, uh, Blake Freeland, the BYU yeah. guy? Like, usually the BYU guys, you know, they get a little downgraded because they're older, because they do the Mormon mission and all that shit. But, um, you know, if you think he's a legit player, third round, you know, maybe the age isn't as much of an issue. Yeah. Um. My apologies. That I wasn't listening the last couple minutes. Did you guys make a comment about the 49ers pick at all? What was their pick? 
the safety. Jair Jair Brown. Brown. But it, it no, was, we it didn't. Was, it was also the first draft pick the 49ers even had in this draft. And they must have traded some of those conditional picks because they moved up, I think, quite a bit. They did. They did. They traded with the Vikings to move up to get them. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a thought it was a worthwhile move for their first pick of the whole drafts. Yeah. You know? And I mean, with like I said, I there's no way you can pick all those picks at the end of the third round all right in a row. Like you might as well package, you know, that and another late pick or something to move up and and get a guy that you're you're eyeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at the draft board right now. Uh, one interesting guy that we haven't really talked about, um, that, you know, at one point in the draft cycle, people were talking about him as a second rounder, uh, Andre Carter, the second army player. It's funny you say that clearly before this draft and before this thing, I was thinking about, has there been ever been any army or Navy players taken in the first round of the NFL draft? In the first round? Yeah, no. in the first round. No way. I don't think the first. I mean, maybe if you go back to, like, the legacy 30s and 40s era. Um, but, yeah, like, Carter, like, it, he was I, – I feel like he got a little more press than maybe his play justified, um, you know, just based on the fact that they're like, oh, wow, this, this fucking army guy – like he performed like crazy in 2021, um, had something like 16 sacks, uh, just really, really promising year. And he took a step back this past year. Um, You're talking but, about Andre Carter? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so whoever takes him, by the way, he might have to finish his see, military have... service before he's allowed to play. I no, I I. I think that has been resolved where he will not have to. Okay. I I know it was an issue at some point earlier this yeah, year, but I, I think it's it's been no no longer an issue. Okay. Which I mean, if you're looking for a guy with work ethic and, and leadership traits, um you buy into team culture and all that. Uh, you know, going going for a guy in the army can't really go wrong there. For sure. Who is shouting about the Dallas Cowboys right now? Drew Pearson. Yes. <laughs> That last name sounds made up. Overshawn? <laughs> Demarvion Overshawn? That sounds like a Keem Peel skit. Dude, if I were the Dallas Cowboys, like, I would just have some fun on day three and just, like, everyone in that draft room just put on, like, a, like a Sith cloak. Bring in yeah, the right? lightsabers. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it's got to be defense here. I like double A. Double yeah. A battery. And I really like the idea of Ringo at this point, you know, in the draft. Just yeah, I'm, I mean, I think Ringo is out. an excellent value at this point. Right. Um, Just take a talent and figure it out. Like, but but you do need defensive line help. So oh yeah, I mean, we need defensive line and linebacker. You know, I worry linebacker. <laughs> hey hey, the actually guys are actually gone. you you were talking about you know wanting that space eater before. What about the uh, Siaki Ika? Yeah, the dude uh, here the, from Baylor. Yeah. yeah, he's a pretty big boy. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering if we're at a tear break again. You know, will it, it be feels like we've been at a tear break since the fucking two thirds the of the way tackle? into the second I feel round. Like, yeah, I feel like we have been. Who is this? Who's screaming? What? Did he just say we have some of the best barbecue in America? Well, they're in Kansas oh, City. Talking about Kansas City. Who is this? <laughs> He's jacked up. Gosh, on the boards. Look at him shake. Who is that? Dorian Williams. I don't know this dude. Influencer? Influencer? Who are you? Who is this dude? Hey, he looks like a like. Looks like, like a machine Eastern gun European knockoff of, of Pete Davidson. Um. Dorian Williams, I don't know a lot about, so I cannot tell you that I'm going to have a he, whole ton of insight looks, on it. He looks like a Tremaine Edmonds, or like just doppelganger. Like he literally looks like him, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> side yeah line, I mean, side I, Edmonds' main feature was like his extreme height and reach, and so you know, you know, just reading ESPN series, light, strong arms, or strong with longer arms. Yeah, you know, Tremaine Edmonds had length. Yeah. I mean, this dude's not Tremaine. Tremaine was like six four, but yeah. dude, I, I mean, really, Tremaine? What a disappointing first round pick, really. Like you, you guys picked him. He was very young, and, and I think totally like the the intent there was like, hey, we filled our inside linebacker need for the next fifteen years, and he just never. He was good, but not good enough to resign. Yeah, I mean, the Bills have a number, and if you can go get that number elsewhere, they say good luck. Like, yeah. you know, they're not going to overpay you just because they like you. Well, it's like the Bears ran into the same situation with Groquan Smith, but Frank and uh, um, what's his nuts? Jeez, I don't, why the fuck did his name just slip my mind? I know you froze. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, Edmonds. Edmonds. Tremaine oh, Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds. <laughs> and, like, the Ravens were happy to trade for and sign Roquan Smith. Yes. I think Edmonds got paid fairly, and it was more than the Bills were willing to give up to their middle linebacker. I mean, you know, it happens. I I worry we're gonna regret him not being there, but and what what are you thinking, Andrew? You thinking uh do you think there's any chance we try to trade back up to the end of the third or um, are we just gonna try to take would, as many fourth and fifth round swings as we can? Like well, I sure shit well, we don't we do rely but... on the seventh and the sixth, like all the those picks we have. I would love it if we do, but our next pick is – I don't see us being able to do it without giving up our fourth rounder, which is number 116. You know what? Let me look at the trade chart here to see what might it might look like to move up. Trade chart. Oh. All right. Let's see. So let's, let's say we move up to like – I, can one of you guys say something right now? I can't hear anything. I'm talking right now. Can you hear me? Yeah, he was just talking. Can you hear me? You can't I hear can me? hear you. Testing, Cody. This happened to you before. You gotta like, yeah, you gotta leave and come back. It's fine. I'll do some math and come back. Let's see. Sorry, I can hear you. I mean, let's say pick 100. Pick 100's literally a uh, hundred dollars or a uh, hundred point value. In order to do that, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So our fourth round pick would only be worth Cody. I don't think that we would have. Well, maybe. So, can you hear me now? Or are you still can't? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I okay. can hear you now. I don't, right. I don't know what happened there. So, like hypothetically, let's say we move up to one hundred Raiders. Uh, before the end of the third, it's it's a hundred points flat. Uh, our fourth rounder is worth sixty-two points, 
and our fifth rounder is worth 30 points that would put us at 92 i think we do have another fifth rounder correct that we acquired so we would still have a fifth rounder yeah and then we could maybe throw in one of the six rounders too which would be seven that would give us about 100 points so we would have to give a fourth fifth and a sixth to move up to that point i i don't know if we do that and then we wouldn't have any picks in the fourth round though but if right. there's a guy he really likes, I'm gonna so I'm gonna say probably not. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, yeah, it just the board seems so even right now. Maybe we do just take a lot of shots in in the last few rounds. I so our seventh round picks are only worth a point each, like one point. We <laughs> we package them all together. Say say we package literally all of them together all four points we could only move up to the end of the sixth round really so yeah i mean that's what uh the draft value chart says i think in reality it plays out differently like well, if, I, if, if if you go to a team and say hey i'll give you four seventh rounders for your fifth i think they take that I think we probably just use this as some special teamers and try to like just keep bro we already we fucking that was our priority free agent signings were special teamers i'm i'm done with special teamers we've given rich Pisaki everything he needs for the special teams let's focus on the rest of the team now we're taking a kicker i bet well kicker's the one exception i'll give you but if you, if you want a starting kicker don't wait until the seventh I don't even. I even scout the kickers. I don't even know who the top kicker is in this draft. I think Jake Moody is the general consensus, but I, I've heard some other arguments. Bills just signed uh, Tyler Bass to a four-year extension. Oh, yeah, good. I saw they actually gave him a lot of guaranteed money, didn't they? I think it was. It was twenty million, twenty-four million total, like twelve and a half guaranteed or something. Which, I mean, whatever. It's like finding a kicker that you trust and can rely on. Like, he, even if he's not the slam dunk, like, hey, I'm I'm best kicker in the league. Whatever. It's chump change for a kicker. I, I mm -hmm. would do it. Yeah, I mean, he's... Um, that contract in, you know, three years, because he's like the fourth highest paid kicker right now. But, in like, you know a couple years you know he'll be the 10th highest paid and hopefully still one of the best you know yeah i mean i think that's actually one aspect of this offseason that no one's really talking about for the packers is that it appears we're moving on from mason crosby really? yeah. you know we're talking about a guy who's been our kicker since what 2007 2006 um i mean he he's been reliable as they come um and he's just getting older losing the leg strength like i still trust him to make money kicks but it's it's those like 50 plus yarders that i wouldn't count on that anymore and and he can't really kick it into the end zone anymore and it seems like with the transition to love, we're we're ready to just transition the whole team. So, I mean, frankly, we might find a reliable quarterback before we before we find a reliable kicker. Um, that's that's one underreported part of this off season. Dude, RG3 looks very skinny these days. Yes, he does. Very skinny. Also, Antonio Brown just tweeted that he's returned to the NFL and posted a picture of him in a Ravens uniform. Just just letting you guys know that. <laughs> I don't trust anything that dude tweets. Yeah, uh, just throwing it out there. Good for him. Dude, what what a fucking shame that uh, like that guy had all the skills to be a hall of fame player and 
just like clearly has serious mental health issues <laughs> that like it, it's a fucking shame that like no one close to him could like get through to like help him. Von, T- Von Tess perfect ruined his life. Tom B. Tom B. Oh, Darnell Washington just went. The That's Steelers? A, it's yeah. a very Steelers pick. <clears throat> Dude, and they got Femaruth as like the dynamic tight end. You bring Washington in as, as tight end too. Did you just say Red Zone? Are those or, his kids? Yeah. Oh. He's... Who is they have? Don't they have? Um. Yeah, Pat Pat Femaruth, right? Friar Moose. Friar Moose. Friar Moose. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he's the dynamic guy. You bring in Washington yeah. as, as your number two. He could be a major red zone threat, helping the run game. Yeah. Seems like a good fit to me. He'll help Kenny Pickett a lot. Mm hmm. Well, I wish you the best, young man. You were one of my draft crushes. I hope you have a good career. <laughs> well, at least he's in the AFC. He won't be bothering us. So, Is that his kids? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Maybe he just kidnaps and his and... girlfriend? The tattoos? and well, It's definitely his girlfriend. So, or it could be his sister or something. I, I mean, the, that's that not little his girl... Sister. That little girl definitely looks very uncomfortable with this whole situation. <laughs> yes, he does. He's got two daughters. And he's married. That's his family two, man. His two daughters look like they're eight. I mean, maybe they're not his biological daughters. Maybe the his <laughs> wife had them already. Um he he had them in high school, Marina Bar right now. No shit. Yeah, he already had. Yeah, I'm reading about five star 2020 uses his baby daughter to announce Georgia commitment. Like, so when he when he was in high school and announced his commitment to play for Georgia, he had his daughter do it. Hmm. Good for him. Cardinals take Michael Wilson, wide receiver. Uh, he he was one of the guys I had on the Packers radar. I'm not really liking the story in Williams' pick. The more I look, a lot of stuff I read, like yeah, special teamer to be a high quality backup. You know, good day three value. Well, what what are his strengths and weaknesses that that are being highlighted? For um, his his size and frame, they're saying, and the fact that he played a bunch of special teams, um, you know, he had good production in college, lots of tackles. But they're saying like his ability to like one diagnose like where blockers are coming from is like a tick slow, mm. and also to be able to take on blockers like is like not one of his, is one of his really big weak points. And I'm like, for a Bills defensive line, that's like really small and doesn't take up, you know, make it really clean for linebackers. That's like terrible. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I, I feel like it, like any like later round linebackers you look at that have a lot of success, it's almost always like, the undersized guy who has killer instincts. Right. So like to hear that his instincts it's are a are little good. slow, <laughs> then like that's concerning. Right. So basically you're like, well, he looks the part. Like, let's see if we can fix the rest of it, I I guess. But I'm seeing yeah, like I mean, that's, you know the Packers I, tried that with Oren Burks uh, a few years ago. That didn't work out very well. I think he I had just, pretty good you're with San Francisco, though, which pisses me off. But you're looking for a starter in the third round. Not if you're the Green you, Bay Packers, especially when you only pick. have like a fifth and a sixth round pick left. I think that's it. 
Yeah, um, I, I wonder if the Bills tried to trade back at all and just couldn't find anything, or or if they really actually liked him enough that they're like, we, we got to take this pick. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, pretty wow. much the Bills draft right now. You're you're relying on like you you hope Dalton Kincaid changes this team, right? Um, I, I think he'll. I think he has the potential too. It's just you know I don't know that he's the potential next year. Is this dude crying? What's happening? So holy, I cow. think that's just his face. That running back that Miami drafted had had a four point three two forty. Crazy. Yeah. Pretty, chain. Pretty yeah, I think that was a good pick for them. But, yeah, that Miami offense is all about speed, man. For sure. Mm -hmm. Dude, and honestly, it's not a bad strategy because like the AFC teams, when you when you're considering like even if you're not number one seed and you have to go play on the road somewhere, the chances of playing in a cold weather place are kind of low. Like Cincinnati's mm -hmm. weather isn't terrible. Kansas City definitely isn't bad. Buffalo, yes, you might run into bad weather there. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It's it's not like you got to worry about going to like New England or something like that. Uh, deep in the playoffs, right? So, so building a, a fast, um, warm weather team, not a terrible strategy for Miami. Curtain battle was taken. Was not somebody you guys had your eyes on? Uh, it's a guy I mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was, there was a lot of talk about him. Some people actually thought he was the better of the Alabama safeties. Um, Brian Branch and Jordan Battle, uh, and good good pick for the Bengals. You know they lost Jesse Bates, um, mm -hmm. br bringing in a potential replacement here. They had um, the dude. Um, what was it Dax Hill? Who was it that they yeah, drafted Hill. last year Dax that Hill. they First converted round pick last year? Yeah, um, cornerback to safety. Yeah, so so this is kind of you probably look at Battle as an insurance pick. Yeah, it's a good pick. Lions didn't waste any time getting their pick in. Broderick Martin, defensive tackle. I saw this motherfucker mock in the seventh. Wow. Yeah. Lions having a having a draft, draft, man. Having a draft. Listen, they're just <laughs> going and getting their guys, I guess. <laughs> I was just gonna say, hey, they got they got their guy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like a lot of times, you know, those these drafts that look like dog shit. It's like, oh wow, they they knew more than everyone else, and this was a great that draft. But huge compared to everyone else he's playing against. <laughs> yeah, I, it's the Detroit draft, though. It's um, it's almost like they're intentionally trying to just go against the grain with every yeah, single pick. All those picks in the first three rounds. Man. Wow. They're bringing a lot of lot of dudes in. Yeah, well, they fucking fleece the Rams for Matt Stafford and whatever. The Rams got a Super Bowl out of it, so they don't care. I don't think I would even want a picture with Roger Goodell. Hmm. How old is Roger Goodell? 60s, I would imagine. Like, I wonder if he's going to be retiring in the next few years. Don't they have to? They just uh, brought him back or whatever. He's from Jamestown? He's 64. He's from Jamestown? I didn't know that. They just like re upped him or whatever. Basically, the owners all just vote. Mm. Like, hey, we like the amount of money we're making. You can stick right. around. Yeah, if 
I'm Jerry Jones, and I bought this team for fifty million dollars, and now it's worth eight billion. Like, I'd keep that guy there too. Is that really how much he bought Dallas for? Fifty mil? I don't actually know. Am I telling you? Yeah, I do. Uh, one hundred and fifty million. Sorry. Well, it's still a pretty good return on it. In nineteen eighty nine. And are now worth a record eight billion, more than any other sports franchise on the planet. Wow, that's wild for a team that really hasn't been Super Bowl relevant in thirty years. Yeah. Dude, and they—it's not even like it's not even. Like they've been an exciting team that has just been missing pieces for most of the time since Aikman retired. They've just been like a mediocre team. And yes. like, yeah, with Dak Prescott now, they're like, they're good, they're solid, but no one's picking them as Super Bowl favorites. You think DeAndre oh, wow. Hopkins ends up getting traded this offseason? I'm, I'm going to say it's getting to the point now or probably not. But Who, Hopkins? Yeah. yeah. No. So I think, I think they've passed what Arizona would want for. Um, so Jared Goff was drafted in 2016. So he's been around for a while. He's only three years older than Hendon Hooker. <laughs> really? Hooker's yeah. old. Yeah. He's literally only three years older than Hooker, and he's supposed to, like, you know. Hooker's, what, 26? He Is he really? I think, I think he's 25, 26. Because I think people are worried he won't. <clears throat> Oh yeah, he's, he's not going to play at all this year. So the first potential for him to even take a snap, he'd be twenty six. I mean, so like that sounds bad, you know, when you consider the average age of an NFL player. But if you really consider a quarterback, and like, yeah, but he's going to be lucky to think, get a, a second contract. I, all right. So let's say you start at twenty six. You go through four like years. You, pro you probably get ten solid years before you even have to worry about like age slowing you down. So that's, you know, that's two solid contracts, and then you have a question on the third contract. Like for a first round pick, or, or you know, well, I mean, fuck for a second round pick where you actually got taken. Or actually, well, was it top of the, the third. third? Top of the third, yeah. yeah. Like all day, that's worth the investment, man. Is fucking potentially ten years? I don't know, I, I I wouldn't be scared away by an older quarterback. Other positions, maybe. Quarterback, they're so protected now. Brandon Whedon. He was twenty-eight, taken in the first round by the Browns. Yeah, well, the Browns are the Browns, and they just took uh, C.R.K. Ika. So there goes your space eater. Mm -hmm. not, not too many of those guys left in this draft. Well, at least not too many that are athletic. Uh, yeah. You think uh, T.J. Slayton's going to play a major role for us this year? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I expect him to be a uh, pretty much full time starter. Uh, you He's know, start out on passing downs. Yeah. Wow, um, that's a big fucking man that just 
turn down the jets, get to that quarterback there. Y- yep, keep going. So, yeah, no, it's, so it's, Clark's going to be more of a defensive end for us, like Wyatt and Clark defensive ends, at least at least on early downs probably. That, that's what I expect. I expect Clark at the end on early downs, and then he'll shift the nose on, on third downs. But could be wrong. Have, who else do we have besides that? Though? Holy fuck. Jake Booty? You know, every single Packers mock draft I saw where fans are like, yeah, I'm going to pick up Jake Moody in the seventh. I'm just like, you're out of your fucking mind. I did not expect him to go in the third round. Are you kidding me? I guess that's what happens when you have the three picks all just mushed together. Hey, hey, I get it because if you can find a kicker who's reliable and good, yeah, I I, I bring a third round around for sure. Yeah, oftentimes, but dude, how, oftentimes how these guys have kickers, to win game winning kicks. Yeah, but you how could many mid round kickers yeah. get taken that are complete busts? Yeah, like, and dude, dude's the going fucking, drafted. And... The Bucks took what the Rodrigo whatever in the Lincoln second chip. round a few years well, back. Well, your problem right there is taking a guy named Rodrigo. <laughs> Yeah, I want a football player, not a soccer player. <laughs> I just saw this Jake Moody guy just booting like 60-yard field goals in, in college. So, Well, shit, man. If he's off the board now, I feel like that that puts pressure on if, if we want a kicker out of this draft, probably moves it up around. Do we do we take a fourth round kicker? Do we take a fifth round kicker? I would feel comfortable fifth round. I, you know, I mean, you just picked round. up an extra pick or two, didn't you? Yeah, we picked up extra picks, but I I still wouldn't burn a fourth on it, let alone a third. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I think a third's kind of crazy. Um, Greg Zerline's still out there. If you want to go with with that. I mean, dude, if, he, if you're just going to sign a vet, I would just try to sign Crosby again. Uh, Zane Gonzalez is out there. He's only 28. Oh, he had, he had a pretty good year. Uh, two he was, ago. yeah, so he missed last year with a groin injury. So he, he missed the whole year. But it did say he was very accurate for, like in 2021. It just depends on whether or not that groin was a really serious injury or not. Oh. It's good to see our boy J.K. Scott was good enough to get re-signed by the Chargers. Old J.K. 47, <laughs> yeah. as he was known. Yeah. I'm going to be mad if he turns into like a pretty decent punter, you know, by the end of his career. Yeah, I mean, punning, punning in L.A. is totally different than punning in Green Bay, though. Yeah. Who's the Bills punter? What's his name? Jake I can Martin. Tell, I, I can tell you who it's not. It's not Matt Ariza. Yeah, that was that a waste of a, that was a waste of a pick. Um, what's his name? It's some like real generic name. <laughs> Didn't didn't what's his um because we just re-signed him for two years. He was formerly Sam Martin. That's it. Mm. Oh yeah, I've heard of Sam Martin. Yep. Uh, he was with uh, Denver before. He's here. We signed him for two years. Um, like two years, six million or something. He was really good for us last year. It's hard to kick in Buffalo. I mean, that's that speaks volumes considering he was just like a basically a pickup off the street. For, yeah, that um, nobody wanted. Like, yeah, already into preseason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was really good. Good directional kicker. Had some boom to his leg. Oh man. So I, I mean, let, let, let's get done to brass tacks here. We're we're talking about punters like this matters. That's why it um, happens when you're at the end of the third round, man. 
Yeah. Uh, but so I, I want to know, like, obviously the next 10 years or whatever, like, like th this is the task before you, like you, there's no mystery about it. Like, you know, looking forward, just as Bill Belichick and Tom Brady knew, like, hey, we got to compete with Peyton Manning and the Colts. As the Bills, you're competing with Pat Mahomes in Kansas City, Joe Burrow, and the Bengals. Uh, anyone else that comes along, sure, you might have a season or two of outliers, but those are your two competitors for the next decade. How do you build your team to, to compete with those two? Score more points than they can. Yep, probably. So you go offense, though? I think it's a fool's errand to think you can stop them, so. Yeah. Plus, they just keep, they, they just keep adding to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. I think you just try and outscore them. Try and hope you get lucky. I mean, football's, you know, about just being there at the end and hoping you ball bounces your way, like, because trying to stop them almost just feels impossible. <laughs> I mean, I, I could, I could see an argument for taking the the Eli Manning Giants approach, and you just get an elite, nasty defensive line um, with just elite players at every position that will make their life miserable. I mean, I know it wasn't that long ago, but the game's, like, just changed even since then. Like, defensive backs can't put their hands on receivers. You can't touch quarterbacks. You can't go in low. You can't go in high. Like, I don't know. I think it's just hard now to do that. You know, I think they've made it because people like high scoring games. They've made it so it's really hard. I've never even heard of this tight end that the Niners just took. Cameron Latow. Latou. Uh, he, well, he went to Alabama. That's kind of crazy. All right. Yeah, no, I mean that's you know, that's 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 my take on it. You know. But and and I I I fully appreciate that you're speaking from the scarred experience <laughs> of that divisional round playoff game like that. Frankly, yeah, like I know you're paying, man. That that's just as bad as Green Bay and the fucking oh, you can the name onside them. kick with yeah, Seattle. That's just one of many. And like last year, like we scored 10 points versus um, the Bengals in the divisional round at home. Well, like I, you're never going to win doing that. Like, listen, man, that, that wasn't the Bengals defense. Buffalo was just not prepared for that game. I, I, don't, I don't know if it was some emotional shit about DeMar Hamlin or, or what happened there. Buffalo did not come into that game prepared in the way that Cincinnati did. And I just, you can't, I mean, you got to score more points. Like simple that's as John, that. That's, that's the highest John man take I've, I've heard all night. 11, <laughs> 11. I woke up at five 45 with my kids after last night. That's what you're going to get. Yeah. How the <laughs> fuck do you even, how are you living life right now with two, the little children that you were bathing before we started this. It's uh survival. <laughs> That's what it is <laughs> at this point. That's what it feels like. Well, I believe this is the last pick of the third round anyway. I think yeah. Minnesota has it. Yeah. It was Sam Fran, but they moved up. Yeah, I've never heard of this dude either. Makai Blackman. Wow. Back. My boy Double A is on the board going day three. 
And I was just going to say, who's... Uh, Ringo's still out there, too. That's crazy. Keely so, Ringo made it into day three. Dude, Chicago got the first pick on day three, and God knows they need defensive help. That sucks for us. Well, uh, let's let's do a just a real quick recap on on the Packers and Bills picks because there is a lot of action tonight, and want to make sure we get it right. So. Well, Green Bay takes Luke Musgrave with their second round pick at black tight end, who's going to be the best tight end in the league in about three years. <laughs> uh, then they follow up with uh, Jaden Reed, who's going to be the next Terry McLaurin in about three years. And then they finish up in the fourth round by drafting the second best tight end in the league in three years, in, uh, Taylor Kraft. So, it's weird they got into the fourth round somehow. Yeah, uh, it just happens every year, you know? Those, those gems. It's the third. We haven't even started the fourth round. <laughs> oh, third Sorry, round. Hey, hey, that's what you get when it's 11-14, uh, 11-15. 11, 11, 11, Bills drafted Osiris Torrance, offensive guard out of Florida. Um, road gear, road I, I, I like it. I like that pick a lot for them. I yeah, that one I'm cool with. Um, and then head scratcher of Dorian Williams, linebacker out of Tulane, literally looks like Tremaine Edmonds, so I don't know if that yeah, had something right. to do with it. But, <laughs> hey, a lot of production. Um, looks like the floor is a you know, backup that's going to play every special teams for you. Um, not sure I want that floor in the third round, but you know, the ceiling, I just – kind of question but that's why i don't make these picks right sometimes you got to put faith in these guys so and that's day two with draft it was a blast, guys. yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, was... I'm glad we got to do it uh i most certainly will not be doing it tomorrow though yeah what <laughs> times does stuff go on tomorrow uh noon i think noon? it starts Yep, I think it starts at noon and goes was, to like uh, eight. Just checking the online updates. That's enough for me on day three. Me too. Um, <laughs> you don't want to podcast day three for eight hours, Cody? Dude, I mean, <laughs> there's got to be enough people watching it that they like they're making money on it, or otherwise they wouldn't be splitting this into three days. Yeah, like yeah, it is. Yeah, it is but, noon. Uh, noon tomorrow. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank well, you, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's. Um, I wish many good things for the Bills. Uh, go ahead and break Rogers' collarbone around game twelve or thirteen. I was That's gonna say cool. we can't do it too early. Yeah. Um, can't believe the 49ers are so stacked that they can take a kicker in the third round. It's- too. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty ballsy. With their really. second I, their second pick of the draft. I didn't even really think about that. That's that's just that's straight cocky to be dude, you know what? Dude, imagine the 49ers like scouts when like they had no draft picks basically, and then they walk into John Lynch's office and they're like slap down Moody's name and be like, We're done, we're done. With with scouting, that's all you need. Like we're done. We'll come back next year. And then and then John was just like, I fucking love it. We're taking a kicker. Like I love it. it. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, we don't need anything else. I'll just trade the picks again next year for whatever we need. So oh, yeah. Oh my god. You think Trey Lance is ever gonna fucking play a game in the NFL? <laughs> I heard no. rumors that they might be tra- trying to trade him. Which is They're I think trying crazy. to trade him. I wouldn't. I would just literally make him compete. Brock Purdy's for. elbows exploding. Yeah. No. I. I. I'm honestly. I'm actually. I'm quite surprised at the current reports that it seems like San Francisco is planning on Purdy as the starter. No way. Like I. I would make it open competition and fully expect Lance to win it. 
There's no way. He had that surgery basically in February. Like, to start the season? No way. Well, and also, like, yeah, dude, he had a nice run. I don't oh care. Oh I don't God. care. I Brock Purdy is not the next Tom Brady. Yeah. No. ESPN's out here comparing Will Levis to Brett Favre because they were both picked 33rd overall. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. On that, right, yeah. get out of here. Oh, God. Brett Favre. I'm just imagining Favre just eating banana peels right now and win one money. <sighs> Yeah, I got what is Brett Favre doing right now? Probably trying to find a way to fucking travel to another country where he won't go to jail. He's probably trying All to find right. a way back into the NFL. See you, gentlemen. <laughs> See ya. All right, amigo. Um, I I'll certainly be keeping in touch with you about uh, picks tomorrow for sure. Um, I'll be around. Yeah, be cl- closing out. Also. Closing out the podcast thing for the draft here. You know, overall, I'm pretty happy with Van Ness. Musgrave, 